Go time. Yep. Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, February 11th, 2020, regular selectmen's meeting. I'm um, all selectmen and president except for Ken Manning, who is out of town today. We have the town clerk, town manager, and the whole recreation department back there, it looks like. So, there's, uh, there's uh, <coughs> one more recreation crew coming in. Come on in, Scott. You're just in time. And before you sit down, please stand with me and salute the flag. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, before we continue on with our regular agenda, um, I just want to mention that uh, this past week, Brian Sincotta passed away. For well, those who don't know, Brian has been a long time major force in Berwick. Is, uh, he was my seventh and eighth grade history teacher at the old uh, junior high. Um, he uh, spent a lot of time in Berwick. He was active in the Historical Society, the American Legion. Is, he's one of the founding members of the Berwick Community Television. Um, the, the hearts go out to his family, and uh, we wish everybody luck with that. Thank you. <coughs> um, is um, meeting minutes of January 28th we're going to put on hold, as Ken is not here, and he would make our quorum to do that. Um, first public comment. Uh, public comment is uh, be up to the podium and ask all questions directed to the chair. Any public comment? You're going to get time later, Frank. Come on. <laughs> Trying to do double duty on us? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, Frank Underwood, the key road. Um, I always check the town's website for scheduled events. And my wife got home last night, and she's looking on the Facebook page, and she sees that the listening session for Great Falls was last night. Knowing that they've got an April 14th and a June 11th, could those be put on the calendar on the Last town's night. website? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and I would have been here, but I missed it. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is, is we're here tonight, Dennis and I, we're going to say hopefully we can speak during the, the, the discussion on the recreation warrant article because we, we jumped in, helped the committee. I think they've done a great job, and we, we've jumped in to help them towards the end here, and we'd like, just like to participate in that discussion as well. Thank you. Any further public comment? There are none. We'll close that. We have no public hearing tonight. There's reports of committees. BCTV does not have a report because Terry's here by herself running the station. Uh, we have Envision Berwick. Envision Berwick will be meeting again regularly. Uh, the first meeting back will be February 18th at 6 o'clock. Um, and I think we'll start meeting, I think I don't know if that's the third Tuesday of the month, but um, that'll be posted on the website. And uh, I'm really bad at updating the town calendar, but um, I am happy to update it. Just send me an email at planning at berwickmain.org. I'll be happy to add uh, events. And I can also teach people how to add events to the calendar. <laughs> I'm a dinosaur, James. You know that. <laughs> Bring your lawn chairs to Sullivan Square, August 1st, September 12th. Uh, we're going to be making a pretty big marketing push coming up soon. We, uh, we raised, uh, combining cash and in-kind services, $12,000. Uh, a lot of that was at least... Um, she donated a ton of time to our efforts, and I think we can we can repeat that effort. And we're starting to organize things to get them to the point of asking for more money for sponsorships. And this year, we'd like to have more food trucks, games, activities for both kids and adults. And the the Falls Chamber of Commerce is helping us this year. And they serve Berwick, South Berwick, North Berwick, Rollinsford, and Summersworth. And um, we'd like to get a couple uh, young uh, students uh, or a couple of student musicians up on stage this year, whether that's two or three acts. 
um, hoping to connect with the high school and, and get them some, some stage time. That's the goal. I'll be back more with as we organize it more. Thank you, James. Thank you. Um, we have no department reports. Presentations. We have a whole bunch of presentations. <laughs> um, it <clears throat> is uh, the Rick Master Plan. I assume is going to take a little bit longer than the rest of them, James. Do you think? Yeah, I can get. Well, I mean, he told me to do three minutes. So. Oh. Well. Jeez. Okay, if you're doing three minutes. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you know, if we want to run through all everything else and then uh, spend the time on the rec master plan. Yeah, I think, let me, I'll, I'll go through my. Okay. Yeah, let it, let's go through all the other individual ordinances and changes yeah. and things. Why don't we do it that way? And then we'll have more time to. Yeah, I've got, I've got that. about five agenda items. It's just because they're all individual warrant articles. It shouldn't take that much time. I'll go through the land use ordinance amendments. In the first land use ordinance amendment, it's titled 6.3 Dimension Requirements Notes. There is a added uh, and density requirements in there, and that was the intent all along of the Village Overlay District. We just had a recommendation from Lee J to add that in there just so there's no questions. Number two is just striking um, Q. We, we got an we got an email about removing this timber harvesting for state consistency. And what happens here is the state of Maine actually enforces this regulation in shoreland zoning. So by us removing it, we are effectively ad adopting the state standard. Although James and I discussed that, and otherwise we would have to take on all of the uh, you know, enforcement activities ourselves. And this way, you know, we just follow the state, state guidelines. And uh, they take care of all that, so we won't have to. Uh, we're still working on this number three, um, updating owner-occupied owner apartments to accessory dwelling units. And um, that's what they are anyways. They're, they're accessory dwelling units, and it's simplifying the language. Mm -hmm. And we're still working on um, if we're going to change the standards. That's something we'll be talking about at our next meeting which is the planning board public hearing. And then after that, we'll have a finalized document and then Dave will be back here for the next selectman meeting to, you know, if there's any significant, or if there's any changes. Now, the, the change in the language, was that a state driven thing? For, no, it's, I think it's for, for us with owner occupied apartments, it's, it's um, it makes you think that the apartment that's created the owner has to live in that apartment, which isn't, that isn't it. The language is, is just. Right, no, uh, semantics. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't read okay. the way it, it, it should. It's just over. No, I, I just, I just know, I'm, I'm seeing more and more, you know, everything referred to as accessory dwelling units now. And, and that's, I mean, that's the buzz. It's a buzz, yeah. pretty much a buzz word, planning word, accessory. And it's also like, it's a really good way for a community to provide uh, housing for for seniors, for parents, for for ki for your kids. Um, it's a good way to make income for folks. And again, that's something we already already have in our ordinance. On the the back page, uh, it's a couple brand. <laughs> it's not branding, but they're naming things. Renaming the definition of low impact industrial to low impact manufacturing. The definition of low impact, which we call low impact manufacturing, refers to things like breweries, assembling components, um, maybe some some low impact woodworking. So they're not really it's not really industrial as much. They're really more manufacturing. And then from that point on, there's no longer industrial uses allowed in the commercial industrial zone. So it makes sense to rename the zone. Village commercial is, is what we're thinking. Uh, number six is just a common sense tweak to no person shall engage in activities on site that exceeds the decibel level. Number seven allows for a um, couple instances, businesses have had to go through planning board for a relatively minor expansion to their to their business. This allows them to just get a permit through Gen instead, rather than having 
um, a company have to go through go through planning board it just makes sense to allow that you know allows them to to expand um, it's a marginal expansion mineral extraction uh, that should be a conditional use it's just allowed by right right now without even a permit through Gen our code enforcement so that seems like a pretty significant use that should be a conditional use um, number nine Parking space, as a general rule, standard shouldn't be embedded in a definition. On top of that, the definition of parking space is inconsistent with our standard later on in a land use ordinance. So it makes sense to take it out. And then number 10 is um, reducing the setback in RCI from 50 feet to 40 feet. And a couple points on that. Um, by reducing the setback, you, when you bring buildings a little bit closer to the roads, it makes it feel like less of a highway um, but also most importantly rci is is designed in our comp plan for property taxes property value and rci is hamstrung by the power lines and the railroad track so it just allows to or makes sense to allow for a little more development in rci are there any questions on those land use ordinance amendments. Um, you, did you talk about ten, or did you skip over that? The road, the at road access, access to lots. So that one, that one is actually that one's gone now. So that's not. That's included? gone. Yeah, that one got take, taken out. So the that one, thing, the whole one, whole yeah. number ten, is next. Yeah, the access to lots seven point two one. That's gone. Yeah. What is it now? Where, what, what are the, what's the code then? It's whatever was existing. It's uh, okay. Yeah, right. It's just so basically that that will come back. Um, we've had a lot of discussion about fair roads, private roads, other things of town standard. Um, once you go from <coughs> two on a dirt road to three, you have to pave. Um, we've had a lot of discussions. We just need more time on it. But it's not accepted by the town if it's a dead end. Correct. Correct. No. Now, um, some towns we do work in, I see if you're building a new building, you have a parking lot, why don't we have a standard for X amount of trees per parking spot or things like that for landscaping? We get buildings going up and there's no, do we have a code and all that? How we, we have, want it we to We have look? landscaping for our village overlay district. For, for what about our roof four? No, but I, I could look into it. I could, I, yeah, it makes sense to me. We shouldn't be, so it's only for the downtown and not the rest of the town? Off the top of my head, there might be standards for for screening. I'll have to get back to you. On the, on the yeah, there are standards for screenings from abutters and things like that, right. but there's not, nothing like you said. There it, should be. There's no square footage for pavement or anything like that. Should be. So. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I, while it's on the on the, on the, on the back. Uh, maybe one of the last pages. I might lose you guys, but it's it's very simple. It's a subdivision regulation amendment. The state of Maine changed their paper requirements. They're not taking mylars anymore. So now we need twenty pound pay, twenty pound white paper. That's the that's that's the subdivision amendment. Hmm. Let's uh, let's talk about pot. Um, I received. Um, an email from our attorney advising us on a handful of definition changes. And those aren't, that's something you'll see when, when Dave's here. Those are, those won't change anything substantially. Those are just definitions. The, the, the biggest change is capping the permits at what exists in each zone now. And this ties into licensing. And um, so you'll see Town of Berwick Marijuana Establishment Licensing Ordinance. So this would be what's suggestion that suggested now is capping it at 14 licenses. So those are marijuana establishments that are either in the works that I'm aware of or are already permitted. Who this came up with 14? That, that, that was the number that I'm aware of that is already in the works. You don't think we should have any more than what's in the works now, 14? No, I, I think I think the number that we have 
is the peak benefit the town's going to receive. Based on what? If, oh, some of these recent projects, they're they're getting more into residential areas, and at some <clears> point, <throat> it just makes sense to have an upper limit. We're, we're, uh, they can't be near a residential area, can they? They can't be in a in a residential well, area. Well, like the one on on Bow Street is close to a couple residences. Where? There's one coming Bow Street. Right. Uh, where's Bow Street? Right here. Pretty much right downtown. One right over here in town. Uh, proposed, correct? Yeah, it was already. It's already in the, in the, I thought we could didn't ha couldn't have anything in downtown. Medical. Medical. Oh, that's all we can have. Yeah. Yep. So there's one on Pond Road. That's that's coming in front of the planning board. So I think. I think the more we've been pretty lucky with a couple of the establishments that have come in that have been in really good locations. Um, my 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 biggest argument is the more we allow, the more we're watering down the existing businesses, and it makes sense to. Um, we want to have somebody that's local to be successful, rather than have once the state protections are gone, you can have these. Uh, national players come in and it makes sense to have someone who lives in Berwick that has a successful business rather than have someone we don't know as that's that's my well how many of these 14 places are people who live in Berwick a couple we got one one I mean one off the top of my head that's that's a pretty try kid yeah exactly that's the only one I know of yep yep so that's that's my my biggest one of my biggest arguments but then there's just i mean for for the cap it's just general fatigue on the subject um, we have a couple of board members that i think are are tired of deal of, of tired of dealing with but are also discouraged at the amount that exists in town and i think that's representative of we opened pandora's box a couple of years ago <clears throat> i think it's time to close it yeah it, it, you know, it, it, I, I don't. I don't want to see us become a boom town, but um, I also have a problem with putting a cap on things. I is, do. Is, you know, is, is as as much as people may talk about it, we do live in a capitalist society. Mm -hmm. Is our society runs on capitalism, and everything is being set up for the businesses. They're following our regulations, and. You know, if there are people on the board that are feeling fatigued with this, you know, that's their personal thing. Yeah, get off that's the board. Not, that's not a professional way to look at Correct. it. Correct. Is the professional way to look at it is to look at what our ordinances are. Is you know, is a lot of people think there are too many housing developments in town, but we don't cap those. Is you know, we have ordinances to control them is you know i have I, I do have a hard time you know saying that you know these certain people can come in here and these people can i and would rather should be I would, I would just what you're saying to i'd rather see be have many that are going to come in but be stricter on what they're going to do on what the property looks like what the building looks like where it is and be and make it look better than what we have you know if it's going to yeah. They're gonna, only so many are going to survive and they're going to disappear again, right. right? There's only so many that are going to make it. So, yeah, so I mean, I guess um, we can have a extended discussion on this. It's just, it's, I can also share in that fatigue, but it's also not just that I'm, 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 I'm personally tired of, of, of talking about it. I'm like, I, I get calls every, every single day. It's been every day for, over a year, I'm talking about marijuana. Um, I get it. I get it, it's my job, but it's also wouldn't my my time be better spent somewhere else? Would be my other my other point. Are they the same questions over and over again? Different inquiries, you know. They're all different from different levels of. Hey, is this site available? What are the regulations to people that are ready to go? You can, can I, go can download the question? regulations off the website. Yeah. Let's um, I, let's let's have a workshop on this. I mean, I think we. Yeah, I think I think it's. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's. I think that's I, a better idea yeah, to I discuss know. that yeah, more. Discuss with the planning board and, and uh, this board and uh, is 
you know, is it, like I said, is is make like Mark said, is put stricter requirements in. You know, we can always tighten things up and make it more restrictive. But you know, as far as you know, arbitrarily capping it at what's here because people are tired of it. I think eventually I it's going to regulate itself. Correct. That's you know, it's going to saturate the market to the point where it's not profitable for somebody else to come in here. The question is, is what is that level? I'm not a big fan of, you know, I, everywhere I drive now, I see one pop up. They're in Kittery, they're in Lebanon, they're everywhere. Everywhere you look, they're popping up. And it just it seems like there's no control over it, and everybody wants to start but their not business. All make it. No, they're not, you know. But the question is, is, you know, to what, to what detriment to a town? Is there going to be some detriment to the town when somebody comes in, another business that comes in, and all they see is mom and pop pot shops everywhere? I, I think it gives a level of perception of you know what is coming into town. Right, right. You know, do we want professional? But not that marijuana is not a professional business, but I think it uh, it's a detractor for some people, in my opinion. That's why we should make them look as attractive as we can. And I, I thought I we really could put those on on Route Four and Route Nine. What I is, but why we have one in downtown? That was the medical marijuana. I don't care what it is, still pot. I, I thought it was only in, I didn't think we'd do anything in downtown, James. I thought you it was know. nine and four. <clears throat> that was the, I mean, it was dispensaries were allowed downtown, and then dispensaries, um, uh, it was at the storefront component was added to that. I think we should get rid of the stuff downtown, let them go out to the out of here and do it myself. That's my opinion. Right. Hey, I think we, it, this is going to need. A full workshop on it. I, 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 I agree. Works for me. Yeah, I think that. Uh, okay. Um, my feelings aren't aren't hurt for, for that. I think <laughs> we can continue. What, to, what are we charging them for a permit? Twenty five hundred per. Well, like, twenty five hundred. Kind of already use. covered that, but the, yeah, the, the licensing. So, without the the cap, the the permit. I'm, I'm suggesting twenty five hundred dollars, and then. Um, Up more. Okay, and that might cap it, um, and. Yeah. To ensure compliance, they would come back to you guys every year, and it'd be a public hearing. We'd invite the abutters, and they pay another twenty five hundred. Yep. Why not? I mean, we do that for junkyards. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, you know. right. They don't pay anything though, do they? Fifty no, bucks. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> they should be yeah, fifty bucks. How, mu how much regulation is enforced by the state, and do they have the capacity, or do they anticipate having the capacity? To enforce their rules and regulations. Yeah, they're not going to steal. It's, it sounds like it sounds yes. like they're they're getting their arms around a, a pretty sophisticated form of it's called seed to sale mm -hmm. tracking. So every night they'll know when there's discrepancies if someone's trying to like go to a black market type of thing. So that's really their only regulation. For us, our biggest concerns are basically order control and security issues, uh, and I think. We we have a pretty good handle on that so far. It, it well is you know we're talking about the business and everything. As you shared with me last week, is uh, the 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 property taxes. Yep. Is what what was Springer's place up on Route Nine? What's that evaluated at? Springer's is evaluated about uh, close to a, a million and a half. So it's evaluated at more than across the street. Mm -hmm. And you got some some companies that are. That thrown around three million dollars of, of building. So, to, to, to all your guys' point, if the, if the thing come, if the market comes and goes, we now have a manufacturing facility, brand new, ready to go for to be used. All right, to be continued. Thanks. Guys. So, well, what, what happens to like uh, the police department and the fire department in those buildings? I mean, what is there? They built those buildings out of Route Nine. They're sprinkled. They're not sprinkled. Oh well, yeah. I Springers. Don't, I don't think they're sprinkled. I don't think they're sprinkled. Is, uh, so we don't ask about that either. We don't. It depends on life safety, life safety code. <coughs> I, I, I know that size stuff. should be sprinkled. I thought. Yeah. No, they're not required to be sprinkled. No. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something we should look at too, then. Yeah, but you know, the is, is, and as far as the police is, you know, I know that the is ones on Route Four, they they went to the police department and sat down with them. You know, used to talk about, you know. Where, where they could have screening and where they shouldn't have screening, you know, things like that right, for security, right. so. You saw how that fire took off on Route 236 last year, right? At that pop, it just phew, took right off. Yeah, so. Thank you, James. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All right, now we'll go to three minutes. Rick said so. <laughs> no. That's what I was told. Yeah. <laughs>
<coughs> I, I think we'll probably have more than three minutes of questions. I can't do anything I, uh, in three minutes, so. Well, <coughs> three minutes. Can do hey. some I apologize if I look like I'm, I'm not making any sense tonight. I'm working at about three hours sleep, so um, it'll be a normal day if I'm not making sense. Well, I was going to say, so. it sounds normal to us. Uh, Rick Vandenberg, uh, Chairman of the Ad Hoc Recreation Master Planning Committee. Um, I am joined tonight by all, of, well, all but one of my committee members, uh, Scott Richardson, Penny Dust, Penny Dust. I was, wearing, I was working on her name earlier, uh, <laughs> Kim Taylor and Natalie Gould. All, all my committee members, uh, and Ruth Ballou, who is not here, was a very important committee member for us. Um, all the committee members had prior experience on other boards, whether it's Envision Berwick, Recreation and Recreation Commission, or uh, Trails and Parks, or some other thing. So they all brought, we had a, a very significant group that brought a lot of horsepower, and brought a lot of understanding of Berwick in general, and maybe what could be on the recreational side of Berwick. Um, so we have been doing this since for a long time, for two, since 2016. I, I feel like I've become friends with, with my committee members because it's been nearly three and a half years. But um, I think it was a productive three and a half years. And I think the plan that you have before you tonight, the, the goal is to enter. Obviously, this is the second time you're seeing this plan. We've given you the plan, I think it was last year in, in the wintertime that you had, and it was a draft. And it's not significantly different. We, mo we modified the, um, the introduction since you've seen it and a few other things just to make it a little more cohesive. And we've, we've had some recreation, so some kind of, um, kind of the overall recreation, kind of how the recreation department works to the plan. And then uh, this past summer, two interested parties, Frank Underwood and um, Dennis Dupree, came to us um, with a little side project that they wanted to do and, and as a group we sort of told them that they could they could do this because not, none of the committee members really had kind of the understanding to do it and that was to really take a look at funding you know kind of thinking about the plan as it's devised and trying to figure come up with ways because you've got a summary table at the end of that that's the other thing we've added since you've seen it last there's a lot of recommendations on that and so it could be it could be a little confusing as to what's a priority and our group once this plan gets adopted, or really maybe even before the plan gets adopted, we'll sort of, we will, we will disband, but we'll, our hope is, we, we came out of Envision Berwick, we're hoping that, that, that other groups are going to spring up around the recreation plan. We recommended in the plan a, um, a, a, a communications group. We've also recommended a community center group to, to kind of continue to look at, reinvigorate that and look at the, look at the feasibility of having a community center. I'm not convinced that, that that group will come out and say that there's any one place where we should build a big facility because the one other thing you have in your plan, plan that's new and is an appendix is a um, capital improvement plan, which identifies some of the important projects that are coming out of our recommendations. And so you've got all these projects, but really, what, what's a plan with projects unless you have the funds to do it? And one of the things we've been doing and been very cognizant of in our group is we don't think that taxes should be the only way that some of these projects get done. There's a lot of grants out there that can be, got, that can be gotten and a lot of work that can be done ahead of time to identify monies. There's also existing monies that we've got. We've got impact fee monies that can help pay for some of these things. Um, that, by the way, the capital improvement plan at the end basically is a, um, it's structured so the cheapest projects are first and it goes down to the most expensive projects at the end. It doesn't mean that's necessarily com the community's priority to have it that way, but we wanted to just show there's a lot of really kind of low hanging fruit that you can do as a project. There's, th there's important things that can be done. And as a part of the survey that we did, so we started, like I said, we started in 2016, and then in, um, in, er in the winter of 2017, we had a recreation uh, master planning summit where we heard the community um, and invited the community in, and we, we, we asked them a variety of questions, and we did some feedback kind of events where we sat at different tables and, and took people's comments and their interest down. And the, the things that we heard in general, there's a lot of things we heard, but the things that rang true is that most of the people in Borough do, do some kind of recreation, which is really great. And that could be either planned, where it's coordinated and scheduled, or sort of unplanned. So, so there's, there's a couple different types, and that's everything from basically sports to arts and crafts to parades, things like that um, that, you, that we can think of. Um, but so all these people, they do some kind of recreation. But the other thing we found out is that many are not aware of all of our facilities. 
And in our communications section of our plan, we talk about the need to go out there and figure out and how we can outreach to the public, whether it's through an information flyer that somebody coming in to do their business in the town hall can pu pull up with recreation, or to have online maps, a variety of sources. I think there's a lot of things that can be done to uh, you know, show people all the things that they can do to recreate in, in town. So there's a, t there's a lot of things, and um, there's a lot of ways that we can do that, and we feel that um, there should be a whole group about just rolling out communication. And that group could be more than, I think, that communication group could be more than just recreation commun communication. It could be other things. It could be a, it could be a larger kind of group that identifies um, the need for, you know, kind of executing certainly some of our recommendations, but then identifying other areas of need outside of recreation and bringing those to the forefront and trying to do those little projects. And most of them you'll see are really not that costly. Um, we think there's some well-loved recreation facilities out there, including Memorial Field. We at, we're advocating for, for, this, for the Board of Selectmen to identify and purchase lands around the Memorial Field as a, as an, uh, with an eye on doing a ma master plan of that facility in the future and taking that facility and maybe giving it some thought about how people use it, maybe do some stuff with, with permanent bathrooms. We highly recommend doing permanent bathrooms. We heard that of the 450 um, surveyors that, that left comments, a large percentage of them talked about Memorial Field. They want to improve security which I'm told is now in the process, which is a good thing. There's lots of things that you'll read that you'll say, oh, this is already in the process. Realize it was three and a half years ago that we started this thing. So the good news is we were on track on some of these things, and some of these things are already moving forward, which is great, like the identification of lands around. Um, Chairman Wright, you've, you've heard from some people. Um, right, Tom yeah, Andrew, Eldridge, talked to a couple of land landowners right. so, who may be interested. Right, and so I, but without a master plan, without considering how that a surplus property works in concert with the, the land that we already have. I think um, it's good to acquire it, but I think we need to master plan it too. We need to figure out what, like for these permanent bathrooms, where should they go? What's the best place as it relates to how the facilities will be aligned in the future? And I think there's some real consideration. It should be a group that does maybe just that master planning and maybe seeks out some professional help. There's a second table in there. That second table identifies, which really not capital projects, but just import other important projects. That table identifies master planning at the Memorial Field, too. We feel, we feel like that's, a, that's an important thing. And all of this, this recreation stuff, James and I just got back recently from the Brownfields Conference. And you know my other hat that I wear, in addition to being a resident, is doing the Brownfields. 90% of the talks that we heard while we were in Los Angeles were how, somehow tying the redevelopment of a property to recreation. And we've already seen that in our town with, with, with prime tanning. You know, with, with some of the developments of the, the kind of that master planning, they envisioned bike trails moving through there and a green spine going through the center of property. So the, the community could engage in the property and, 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 and be a part of it. And there's some connectors that can be do too. We've got Great Falls Park, which is starting to come online. Connecting that with other things in town through walking and biking and stuff, we feel like are, is a very important thing. Um, the other, the other, without support though of the, of, of the Board of Selectmen and, and, and town, both from a, just a, just a get, keep going kind of support, but also a financial support, Really, this plan won't will go unused. I think um, we we need to have the financial support, and so to that end, like I alluded to earlier, Frank and and Dennis did um, some legwork just to figure out that there's a lot of funds that have been that ended up in the undesignated fund balance, and some of those some of those monies we'd advocate, if possible, could be pulled back out and used for some of this low hanging fruit recreational projects. We've proposed a number of. Um, uh, a, a one primary Warren article that we want you to consider, and that is um, dealing with uh, adopting this plan and making it part of the current comprehensive plan. There's a comprehensive group that's starting, and I sit on that. Eventually, this chapter, this will be, we'll ultimately, I envision this pulling that out of the appendix, and it becomes a chapter in the comprehensive plan that's being developed. It'll probably, probably look a little bit different, but it's the same words that I think that will ultimately go in there. We feel like it's it's valuable, um, so your 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 support is going to be uh, very important as we go forward to tell Envision Berwick 
first and foremost to, to form other groups around this idea of recreation, whether it's the uh, community center group or the creative culture committee or, or any number of things that can fall out of the chapters of the, of the plan. Um, with that, I mean, I sort of leave it to you for if you want to have if you have any preliminary questions, I can come back over the next the course of next several meetings and we can we can answer questions. But we got the whole group here now, so it might be a good time to at least ask some questions because if I can't answer, I'm sure one of one of my committee members can. I think that was more than five minutes. <laughs> well, when he told see that was the thing he told me I had more, and so when, when you, you can't tell me I've got more time because I'm just gonna your take your goal is to get it on the ballot. For June, for June to be adopted. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the board will have to. When does that drop dead date for the June ballot? Uh, I have it scheduled. <coughs> Several things we want to work it's on. It's in March sometime, right? So March 10th would be the vote. You guys vote so on all the articles. So February 25th is public discussion. Mm -hmm. So that's we'll a chance for, for you to come back. Yep. And if we absolutely yeah. have to, you can <coughs> still make changes for the mar before the March 10th vote. So those could be presented that night, yeah. and then they would vote on the new so changes. So we feel like we've got time, and we're, we've got the energy, and we, we, would, we would love for this to be on the ballot for, for that. And then Dennis and Frank also have done a number of other warrant articles and submitted them to the town manager. And um, we're actually starting to talk about some of those, I think, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep. So we'll be talking about some of those as it relates to possibilities. Um, just off the top of my head, I can't remember all of them, but one deals with um, with install, you know, maybe developing a warrant article to put those bathrooms in. You know, if, if there's a good place that will work, that can be maybe that somebody sometime in the future we won't be saying, oh, that's in the wrong place. Where you the know, sewer line is. Right. Well, that, that's that's, <laughs> that's the best where the place good to, places. It's the best place because it's going to cost you the least amount exactly. of money to connect it there. Exactly. Knox Lane. No, yeah, so the, so the permanent bathrooms, and, if you, and there's, there's some stuff to, uh, to help with the grant writer. There's a variety of, of other Warren articles that um, were, were drafted by, by Frank and Dennis and have been put before you. Uh, to me, obviously, the most important being, at least for this juncture, to do the one to adopt the plan. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you, Rick. Very good plan. Very thorough. Is, you guys want to be quick about it? <laughs> we still have budget to go through tonight, so. Uh, Dennis Dupree, uh, Deputy Monogrammers, and uh, Friends of the Baroque Riverfront. Among um, other things. A few things. Everywhere. Uh, <laughs> This group, the recreation group, did an awesome job. I wasn't part of that three-year plan, but I've been wa watching and listening and over the three years and so on and so forth, being involved with the riverfront and a few other things that we'd like to get involved with. Um, I've been advocating for 40 years, in my opinion, when you, when you have a department, it should be manned full-time. That's my opinion. You know, the fire department 200 years ago probably started out with volunteers but it needs to be manned um, volunteers can only go so far we've worked on the riverfront we had a phenomenal group that worked on the riverfront and brought it to fruition with all of the funding from the community and businesses in the local area that's how it came about and the town giving us the piece of land to do it we're at a standpoint where you our, our goal is to look at the riverfront and possibly have the capabilities of having kayaks down there that the town has to rent out and so on and so forth and have them available to the community and the people at the rec field, the students and all of that stuff. But again, who's going to man it? So it, it's almost like it needs to come full circle and grow. And I'm advocating for full-time rec department that, so we can do this. You had a bunch of volunteers that were given $25,000 to work across the street. A group of people got together, saw that vision, worked with the town, worked with, with Cahir at the time. So you had three people in the loop. Cahir goes out, Great Falls comes in, the loop continues, and the process is going forward. Again, volunteers can only go so far. So. From my standpoint, there's other projects that I would like. I'm gathering information on. Town owns two acres on Mur Murdoch Lake, a Hatfields Pond. I don't want to work on it in, in the first year because 
There's going to be work on the bridge on the Hobbit Road and the other Ridland Roads out. But our goal is to basically bulldoze that lot flat, put a dock in, and now you can paddle around 300 acres on the pond, which would be awesome. I'm gathering information that was already started by other people. That again is along the riverfront down here that the town now has another piece of land that they own on the riverfront. So I'm gather gathering information to bring it back to our group. But my point is this. We are at a point where we need to have a full-time department to man this. The town has put forward 25000 last year, maybe $25,000 this year for grant writers. What, and I applaud that, but what we should be saying is, if there's any organization out there, we have $50,000 already allocated. Step forward, bring more volunteers in, and now we have some money for you to work on a project. My opinion, put $20,000 towards a lot, Great Falls property, have somebody write for $5,000 the balance, write some more grants, get some fencing, some park benches. So I think you understand where I'm get, get, getting to is we need a department that you can go to. Every department that we have in town, the library is gone from volunteers, and now look where it's at. BCTV is gone from volunteers, and now look where we're at. We're growing. Each department is, is growing, and it needs to be manned properly. Because I believe over the all these years, and, and Creighton said it years ago, you got to have grant writers. Well, I've been on the phone talking to people in Sanford and other towns and Summers and so on and so forth. The money that that we have missed is phenomenal. The government wants to give it to you. Somebody's just got to write it up. If we'd had full time and people manning an office, you'd have been able to go in there and say, geez, I've got 40 hours a week to do this. I can work on all this stuff when it's slower in the winter time. There's not a lot of projects going on. There's some indoor stuff, but we just missed the boat on that. And I think it's time that we need to catch up on it. And again, thank you for what you've done because you've basically taken, and over the years we've had <coughs> part-time rec directors who have done a phenomenal job. They've had their documentation, but we've gone from documentation to a Bible. You've put together a Bible that we can all now go back, no matter if you're a volunteer like myself or anybody that wants to work on park benches, sidewalks, fencing, or anything like that, is saying hey, we really now have something that the town is really going to look at and is finally saying, they've always funded it, but finally saying, we're going to take it full circle. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you Dennis. Yeah, just a couple things, uh, Frank Underwood. Um, <coughs> Tomorrow should be a good day looking at those things and getting a, a, a yep. good feel for that. And it's the kind of a discussion we really needed to have with Lisa and Steve and James and, and Kim and whatever, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Because we undertook this kind of on our own and we just want to make sure we haven't stepped out of bounds. So based on tomorrow's discussion, we should be able to meet your timeline to come back in here for the Warren articles and talk, uh, talk about them, obviously run them by you. Um, the other thing is, is I had an opportunity to go with James and Jennifer to the fire station. I went out there to look at the ongoing construction, and I did meet Brad and Daniel. I'm, is Brad the super out there? Yep. And one of the things that I remember when, when the project came before the planning board was talking about the corridors through there along the edge, edge of the woods line and up through the middle. Some of the items you'll see on that list when you look through it talks about that public space behind the police station, even talks about some bathroom facilities there. And those were all things that generally came up in the course of you know, discussions getting to the point of the fire station. Um, what I'd like to see happen is when the snow melts and as this project winds down out there, if there are things that can be piggybacked off of it, because it would be nice that if you're going to Loam it and seed it and stuff. You're not going back in there and tear it all up in six months or whatever. So I think the ideal time would be is in the spring when they're starting to look at the outside stuff and shaping the roads and dressing up the side slopes. If we could get a group out there just to see how projects that are identified in that CIP and the in the recreation master plan could be feathered in in a timely in a timely manner. It'd be nice to finish that whole area off and step back because I've often said. 
that's going to be the showpiece of the downtown area as to what we want the downtown to actually look like in these 11 acres. We can turn that into our showpiece out there. So looking forward to tomorrow, Steve, at least uh, to, to sit down. All right, good. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Moving on. Um, unfinished business, we have none. The town manager's report. Uh, we've been just working on budget, budget, and more budget. And hopefully we'll present for the next couple of meetings. We'll get through it. Um, as uh, the prime site is, is uh, moving, it's just not quite fast enough for everybody. But they were here last night, and they are making progress, which is really good. Um, we're all excited to see some flags out there or something going on. Do they, they have anything lined up yet here? Well, they, they hired a, a, a civil, yeah. Yeah, Spago Technics, and uh, they're doing, they've already started researching infrastructure and what's out here, so they have something to work from. There are no tenants lined up right um, they have. They said that they have people that they're talking to and they're looking at their needs. Yep. and where they could put them in the lot to make everything work. So it sounds like they might have some definite, yeah. you know, prospects. Right. Julie, the daughter, who's kind of the project manager, seems to be pretty active in all of that. And I, I know she talked to Harry Wesson, uh, who said he wasn't interested anymore. So, so we need to go a different direction for something right. like that. But <clears throat> they're working on it. I, and as I say, they've, already, they've made a big investment. The quicker they get uh, people in there and, and getting money up. What, um, what are we going to do with the fire department when the new one opens? Sell it. Sell it. What about a community center? It, mm. Not a lot of parking space and mm. no, no outside area, really. So it's not connected that, to that the rest. That building has some real challenges. Yeah. It also has to be completely remodeled, too. Yeah. Well, it has... Mold yeah. and industrial load, hygiene load issues, problems with yeah. snow on the roof. Yeah. You've got load problems on the second floor. You've got moisture, drainage Don't issues. Don't keep saying that. Nobody will want to buy it. Quiet Somebody down. Somebody will. It's got <laughs> value. Yeah, don't Not to it. us. It what about talking to <laughs> Great Falls about it, if they're going to have a piece of corner of a Well, he knows about it. He, he, he knows. I mean about a community center yeah. in oh. the prime tanning site somewhere or in one of the existing buildings. <clears throat> well, we've already hit him up for a library downtown. <laughs> What do you say, yes? <laughs> he said, we'll consider it. You've got to hit everyone up for something. Well, oh. it is, Always coming to my door looking for it, it is One of the things I learned as, a, as an organizer was, is that you don't ask what you don't ask, you don't get what you don't ask for. Right. So ask for everything. That's right. You know, is you might get something, but, you know, what are you going to ask for now? <laughs> I can add stuff. Rick Vandenberg, 51 East Pasture Road. Um, when, the, when the Smiths were here yesterday, they were talking about some of the things they've done, and the, their biggest news was obviously that they've hired the civil firm. But the other thing that we, the Crediri Associates, the company I worked with, has helped them with is we've helped them do a preliminary loan application for Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission's um, re revolving loan fund. They have a Brownfields revolving loan fund. In fact, Probably the, one of the most successful revolving loan right. funds in the in the whole country, really. Yeah. And I think they've they've revolved I think seven or eight million dollars through that program. Wow. And uh, the Smiths, all of the anything that they put on the surface there, whether it's parking or green landscaped areas or building foundations, can be considered a brownfields eligible expense. And so now they can go get low interest loan, a very low interest loan, to help pay for some of the development costs, which is really which is really critical. Right. And it's going to help them. It's another hurdle that just, that's why that, that program exists, is to help developers, you know, overcome the environmental hurdles. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, Southern Maine, I know I've talked to um, people that there, and some of their executive members, and they're very focused on getting as much help to Berwick as they can, especially with the prime site. So it's, they're just waiting for them to come ask for more money. Mm. So it's kind of exciting. But, um, one of the things I need to mention, we talked about at uh, last meeting, was naming the access road. Has anybody given that any thought? <laughs> probably not. But you need to probably make a decision uh, on our next meeting if you can remember to pull out your sheets and kind of come up with a recommendation. Jennifer already told me I couldn't call it wrong way road. <laughs> no. So that's that you really need to think about. And that's all I have. No. Thank you, Steve. <coughs> Is, um, I have nothing under... Selectman's communications. 
We have uh, accounts payable. We have a payroll warrant, 2032, from February 6, 2020, for the amount of $60,715.01. We have account payable warrant, 2033, from February 13th, 2020, for the amount of $229,786.93. We have a water warrant, 033, from February 13th, 2020, for the amount of $5,355.31. And we have a payroll warrant, 2033, for uh, February 13th, 2020, 2020, for the amount of $58,571.34. I make a motion we pay the bills. Second your motion. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, new business, posted roads. It's that time of year. Um, you should have the list in your packets. No? No. Nope. Oh, yep, we do. Yep, we do there. It's uh, Pine Hill Road from Sullivan Street to Messengers Bridge, Little River Road from Messengers Bridge to North Burke Town Line. The Long Swamp Road from Little River Road to Lebanon Town Line. Cranberry Meadow Road from Pine Hill Road to Old Sanford Road. Old Sanford Road from Cranberry Meadow Road to North Berwick Town Line. Diamond Hill Road from Old Sanford Road to Little River. Wentworth Road from School Street to Old Route 4. Blackberry Hill Road from Berwick Road to Portland Street. Guinea Road from Blackberry Hill Road to School Street. And Old Pine Hill Road North from School Street to Pine Hill Road. Is, um, and then we just, just allow, make a motion. We allow them to post it. Yeah, when we they usually post it well, towards the end of February. Um, but from that. Yeah, it, it's who knows when the, the frost comes Ready? out, goes back in. Yeah, we, we did it early last year. Yeah, we might uh, be doing it early this year, so. especially with the warm weather right. and all the rain. So. As soon as they can get them into my office, I'll sign them off and they'll post it. Do we have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Personal property tax write-off. These are the ones that we've had our lawyer looking at and chasing money. Um, and some of them, the statute of limitations, we can't go back and charge them. Uh, and um, so it's the earlier ones like 2010, I think up to 2016, we can't collect. Um, and they seem to know that, some of them. But we have, um, I think our assessor needs to go back out to these people who are still in business here to, and make sure, what, see what they have. Because they don't seem to be sending in any kind of declaration, which they're supposed to do every year. So we, I think this, I'm going to ask the assessors to pay them a visit. And, uh, and see w what they have. The health center, for instance, is still open. Uh, he has paid up some, but refuses to pay any of the further back. And he said, we don't Where the hell's the health center? Right, um, right, right over the Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen. There. Oh, upstairs there where the yeah. lawyer is? Right, I going thought going he was okay. not in business, but he no, still is. He's there two days a week, I believe. Yeah. So, um, so what, is he just refusing to pay because he thinks it's beyond the statute of limitations? Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. He doesn't have to pay after I figured how many years. But yeah. Is it a non-profit or something like that? Is it, or is it a regular well, no, doctor's office? No, it's in office? general. So, uh, it's, <laughs> I, I don't understand. It, <laughs> it is, he ignored it long enough and we didn't push it in time so that the statute of limitations ran out on all these back years. We so this is our fault. Right. Yeah. Well, it's his fault for not paying, in, their fault for not paying in the first place, but you know, that's when we were dealing with Patrick back then, we were trying to get a handle on this. Yeah. That's when we uh, hired the Thomas Agency uh, there. <coughs> they don't, they don't do anything. No. no. Well, they did, they did clean some of it up for us. You know, we had quite a backlog at that time. So, What's the statute of limitations? How many years? What is this? Six years. Six, Six years. years. Remember, those were assessed in 2015. Right. Yeah. So. And some other companies have been sold, like Great Works Test Born. Uh, they were purchased by WS Cole, and we've been trying to get them to pay, and uh, they refused to pay. 
Who? <coughs> F.W. Cole. Wait, we got to go back to where the people that are there are still there. I, I oh, yeah, we have. To, to where, where their business was? They're still there. That's W. Cole. Yeah, I know. No, Cole's in Summersworth. I'm talking about the Great Works Test Boring was on Route 4. Right. right? The building's still there, and the owners of Great Works Test Boring are still there, the old owners. So they stay the ones who owe the money. According to what our legal counsel is telling us, is S.W. Cole purchased Great Works Test Board. Correct, but he only purchased it a few years ago. He's still really responsible right. for the taxes. Right. Way back? Yeah. Why is it they should have paid the taxes when they purchased the property? Or they purchased didn't purchase the property. The company. They purchased, purchased the company. The company yeah. Right, they're, they're some, in some trucks. They're gone. They, they're on wheels. All I can so, tell you is that our lawyer has contacted them and they are refusing to pay, um, and so I can't. Can we take him to court? Huh? Can we take him to court? I uh, mean, it's uh, just uh, that's a bad precedent if we let people just ignore it and just for a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, it's going to cost us a it's heck. Not a couple hundred dollars. Uh, it's well, it, you it, can't it, it, you can't go back for all these years. First right. of all, so you started two thousand and seventeen. You're talking three or four hundred dollars. Yeah. You know it's. Is it worth chasing? Well, I mean, if we don't chase them down now, are they just going to keep racking up a bill and hey, ignoring it? What about going down here to the people that are there in the old building now? They own Great Works. Go, I'd go. Did they get a bill yet? I don't know who's in the old building. The owners that own Great Works, the Dions. I I don't know. All I know is our lawyer has chased the trail to who owns what, and we've written letters and tried to get them to pay. And that's. I'll but I mean, they have bills up I'll to two thousand. Put on my gun belt and I'll go knock on their doors. <laughs> you know? Get your badge, huh? Honestly, as much as we're paying the attorney to do all this work, it's you're just going to be racking up more attorney's bills. Just come to the mic. You cannot get blood from a stone. Just come to the mic. So, all right. <laughs> we have to be very diligent about chasing them on the current years that we're using and making sure that they are filling out the declarations <coughs> every year. The assessor sends out letters to everybody we have for personal property, and they're supposed to submit a declaration of what they have for personal property. And I'll bet that most of them don't even send it in. So it's their job to go find out what they have. What, um, who, are you, who are you doing for the testing over the fire station, SW Cole? Yes, they are. Well, get rid of them. They're almost done, and, they, and we owe them money. I'll take care of it. Don't pay them. That's right, don't pay them. And so, so, and we told them that we got, if they don't pay, we're not going to do business with them anymore. Anyway, that's where we are. That's one way to do it. Is, uh, do you need a motion? Yeah, you need it? a motion for all these. To, to write it off? Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. Oh, I have a problem when we have an active business in town. They've received a bill in the past. They know that they've owned the taxes. It's our fault for not enforcing it, but <clears throat> it's kind of moot. If we have a property owner that doesn't pay their taxes, we foreclose on them. That's what frustrates the heck out of me. We've got a business, and now you know they owe all, back all taxes. All we can do is, is file an EC, uh, UCC claim, and we've done that with some of the ones who owe us more money. So what the hell's 540 uh, Route 4? What's that? 540 Route 4. Uh, I'm 511. Well, that list, that's listed as Greg Parshley. Oh, 540 Route 4? Yeah. So it's over to Dave Mick's place. Over to Mix. He rents the spot to Mix. Yeah, that yeah. must be it. <coughs> Are we also writing off this uh, you know, Great Works 2020, 19, 18, 17 as well? Because that's on here. Is that for Coffin Road? Yeah. Yeah, no. It works just boring. They're the ones that were purchased by S.W. Yeah. Cole. Right. But I, but I just mean like we're talking about writing off these older ones that are before 2016. I I get that at least. Yeah. If I don't like it, I get it. Well, but the more recent goes ones, they're doing work for us. And they're not even in town anymore. They've been gone for three years. Yeah. So the boring has gone to Summer's Worth at Malley Farm. So then, what, are these just wrong taxes then? Or? No, well, it's for a total of $3,917.55, right. which is all but the top two. Yeah. So the 1819s would not My be My point is, there's still, there's still equipment there. There's trailers, there's trucks. They didn't get rid of anything they had. There's, there's, 
You know, but no one's going to go down there and look at it. Then let them have it for free. But you, someone's going to go out and make, a, make it happen. They're going out there and getting it. That's the assessor's job. Whatever, get them to do it then. And they, they are. But if they're owned by S.W. Coal, and yeah. it's S.W. Coal who we have to... Jesus, Steve, look, I'll tell you this one more time. <laughs> S.W. Coal's in Summersworth. Forget about them. They're gone. Take, screw them over here at the, at the fire station. Get, get it out of there. But the Great Works is a sign over there. That's the name of Great Works Grain. It's still there. The people that own the Great Works Test Boring are still there. There's still equipment there. That's what you have to do is go there and find out they've been gone for, what, three years? Then that's what we have to do. I'm trying to explain that to you. Okay. I'll look at it, but I did. But what? Uh, how, uh, how much have we spent in attorney's fees so well, far? That's, that's the other question. If you, Lisa, if you, you, you're going to speak, Lisa. I, you I have don't to know. Come to the microphone. I don't think we, I think it's a, have the assessor go down there and do it. Whoever you, from here is going to go down and have them go down and do it. If you don't collect it, then the hell with the lawyer. But someone's going to make it. You've got to make an effort, right? <clears throat> and send the bill in the mail is not an effort. I'll speak on the assessing for just for a quick second. So since the assessing has been my office office buddies for a while we've we've kind of we've gone from kind of having assessing one one day one and a half days a week to we now have mri in, in the office three times a week and i've seen them between karen paul and michelle they're chasing i mean they're really like they're really um getting moving on being able to get on top of this stuff but they've come from such a um they had to let, like catch up and kind of they're constantly trying to get ahead of this stuff. So I think I think they'll re like we're going to be in a good place with personal property. I've seen them in the future. I've seen them turn their attention yeah, to yeah. getting on top of personal. Well, they're, they're property. catching a lot of properties that are being split, not just in personal property, but in the real estate. They're catching tons of stuff that people just right. go ahead and split on their own, and, and that they're making illegal lots or, and uh, so they're out doing that too. So it's, they're, they're very busy, but that's their job. So I'll check up with Karen tomorrow, see where they are, and ask him to send Mr. Uh, McKinley, whatever his name is, out. All right? But she, you, it's up to you. If you don't want to write it off, you, you don't have to write it off. It's up to you. You're, you're, the, you're the assessors. I say send it off. If we can't get it, then we write it off. If they haven't been there yet to try to get it, then if they have been, then forget it. I don't know where they've been and what they haven't been. I, mean, I got a few bills. You want to forgive them? <laughs> no. You got, you I got to wait. wait five years. Jesus. <laughs> I don't understand why people don't pay. Mm -hmm. Is it <coughs> or not? No? Uh, All right. We'll pass on that one for now. All right. We'll, we'll go back to it. Yeah, setting the polling hours. The presidential primary and special state referendum election. Yes, I'm here to request that the polling hours be set for 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. 9 a.m., not 8? Oh, gosh, 8 a.m. Oh. You have to forgive me. I have this horrible cold night. <laughs> uh -huh. I was going to say, I didn't, I didn't realize you could keep the polls open until 9 p.m. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be fun. <laughs> From 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Right. So moved. Second. Second. Yep. Those in favor? Thank you. See, and you got what you asked for. Continuing with that, I'm sorry. <laughs> you got what you asked for. Well, we have to see if they want to not work at the same time. Then. Well, that's, 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 that's next. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'd also would like to um, close customer service on that day, being the first presidential primary. I'm not sure of what we're going to have for voter presence, so I'm hoping a lot. So I would like to. Um, use my staff as registration. So moved. Yeah. You have a second? Yeah. yeah. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. We should have a Trump rally that day. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, <Huh? laughs> you see how you showed up in Manchester last night? Quick claim deeds. Oh, we yeah. have none. We have no abatements and supplementals. Is second public comment. Okie, okay. okay. come okay. on up. I knew you'd die there for a reason. I'm here. You said to have questions. You're in the mood today, so. Uh, the first thing is, we haven't had power uh, telephone service 
at the transfer station since uh, they had that tree come down on 236. So Last week, huh? that's why I haven't been answering the phone. <laughs> when was that? Geez, what was it? Like a week ago, Thursday. Has anybody called the? the uh, Robert has been trying to get hold of them. Okay, they're useless. He said the phone was ringing on his phone, but it wasn't ringing that down was at ours. That's consolidated. Yeah. And, and the second thing I'd like to ask if any way we could possibly stop accepting uh, demo at quarter to four, so we can get out of there at a half decent time. Yeah, we right. can. I think that's reasonable. I'll see what happens. Sure. Yeah. Just set, figure out what you want to set the hours, and that's what we'll do. Oh no, the hours are fine. We just just want to shut the uh, demo part down. Yeah, we'll just yeah. Just give us a set of hours. I, you want to have the demo come? Is that because of the? It we'll just, just takes it. so much time to get it cleaned up. Just to just to uh, farm to unload and all that. Mm. You know, a lot of times they'll come in at five minutes to four and they got a truck load. Yeah, and it takes a good. 10 minutes to get that stuff out of the truck and in the back hole and into the dumpsters and all that. So Is 15 could, minutes enough? You know? I think so. You know? It's better than nothing. It, it is, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, you know people going to be going, well, I got 15 minutes to uh, get down there and, you know, is. Uh, why don't you just cut it at 3.30 yeah. and call it good? <laughs> that would be fine, too. We're, we're going to post that up and make people aware, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah we can put a sign yeah. out front or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay then. All right, that was easy. How do, yes, why do we is. use a backhoe? Pardon me? Why are we using a backhoe for? Because the dumps are too high for people to throw stuff in. Plus, they have couches and uh, recliners and stuff like that. That there's no way they can. That's safer. Them up it's safer the for them to do plus, that. A lot of these new mattresses are about that thick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially the king size and queen size. I know. I just had to buy one. Jesus. Okay, then. Good enough. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. You going for a mattress yet? Have a good night. Any other comments? Yep. Is, uh, we have no executive session. <laughs> other business non agenda <laughs> item. Tell me, Ed. Is the radio employees. Oh, you want to talk about that? Yes, I do. Go for it. Is something that we have to discuss is about the new fire station is um no we've we've kept a pretty tight budget on this is uh we allotted six million dollars and we're working really hard on getting there is we had hoped to get some additional savings during the construction process but you know there's been increases in prices on steel and materials and things that have cut into it but one of the things that we talked about from the very beginning was in the equipment bay is having radiant floor heat in there. No, not necessarily to heat the the area up to the working temperature, but it's more for helping the dry the trucks and uh, working on the trucks and things. Um, we, we had that as an option and uh, we've been looking at, you know, trying to get money put aside. We have saved money on the winter conditions because it's been a warm winter we haven't so spent far, as much so there far. but we also have increases in like the door and hardware schedules you know due to price increases so no, that's not the reason why is um is Pardon. um but well for that's that one but is uh but we have for steel and concrete and things like right, that right. we've had price increases um so we haven't been able to get the savings we wanted um the cost of the radiant floor heat is just to, for that part, was we quoted at $113,000. And then some other additional funds that would be needed for extra installation and, and the installation of that. Um, so we're looking at probably somewhere close to $120,000. What do you think, Dennis? And um, this is something that we're trying to figure out how we can possibly you know, fund this and get it in there, because it'd be a real shame at this point, not to do it. I no, think we're, so. We're, I nev mean, we're never going to be able to do it again. No. Nope. This would be the time to do it. Yeah. So, what yeah. I have to say, Tom, is someone better start paying attention down there. The architects aren't pulling their load. People mm -hmm. in this town aren't pulling their load. They're going to have to start paying attention to what's going on. Because emails weren't sent back. They're, you know how it's going. Yeah. I mean, I see we're still paying Port City Architecture. How much, how much is their contract? He hasn't done us any favors, Steve. No. Port City. Well, 
You don't have to tell me that, Mark. I we, know. Tom I know. and I know. I know, too. We're, we're there, and we're watching, and... Uh, but, and, and Andy, and the, the principal, Andy, is supposed to be there tomorrow for our meeting. Is, um, well, hopefully, he, get, he hopefully doesn't have the coronavirus. He's coming back from Thailand. So, he is? Yeah. Who didn't let him in? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it personally. But <laughs> is, uh, Chief, yeah. if you want to uh, talk about the radiant floor heat. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a must. It really is. Um, you have a new station. Um, a couple of things that we run into now is the floor is wet. You can't keep all the, the, the wetness off the floor from the trucks. That's going to continue. There's going to be drains. But once that floor gets wet, it's really slippery. Now you can put stuff on the floor to take care of that. But the other issue is we still have hose that we have to hang and dry because if you don't, then it gets mildew. That's in the hose tower. Yeah, but we don't have a hose tower because we were under the impression that we were going to get the radiant heat, which now you can lay the hose out on the floor and it will dry over a period of time. So we've eliminated the hose tower? Like the hose tower? You're now? having a training tower. Training, training having, tower? Yeah. Oh, so it's just a You're not tower. having a hose tower. Yeah. I thought it did both. No, so we, we, we talked about that and, uh, you know, to, to, to modify it to be a hose drying tower with the equipment and everything, you know, it didn't seem like it was worth the money, you know, for what would be using it. And having the radiant floor heat would be that much better for everything, you know. So, um, so what's the question? Are we gonna have to put it on the ballot or something? Well, that's a, we need to we we need to figure out you know where we can get this money. Is um, is when do we need it by? Well, we'll need it before we finish oh, the station. But sure. I'm hoping that we're I'm a little bit more optimistic that we're going to get more savings as the project moves forward. We, we haven't gone through all our winter funding, but that's not 120000 So we're So uh, hopefully there's some savings there. This guy, saying, Brad. Huh? Have we gone right through him? Have you asked the contractor about it, where we can save money? Oh, yeah. Yes. What are they oh, saying? Yeah, yeah well, they've been, we've, been, we've been swapping things out. You no, know, like we've, we've cut back on, the, on the, the siding details and things, you know, using more of the hardy planks instead of, you know, brick and things like that. We've yeah. cut back. We've cut back most everywhere we could, is my opinion. You know. I, I think it'd be foolish to not do this. I mean, again, like you just mentioned, it's this is a one-time deal. We either do it now or it doesn't happen at all. And I think we've, uh, we've already told them to move ahead. Yeah, uh, to do it. Question is, is where uh, can we? Uh, we can, money we left can, the fire department budget. You got a hundred grand in there left over? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the plan is is to use the unassigned fund balance. That we do every year, we have a, we have to carry 12.5 percent in our budget in the unfunded, and the balance is supposed to be able to be used for capital projects, one-time expenses. That's where we're looking to, to do that. Can we, can we modify the impact fee structure to allocate funds towards that? Uh, not at no. this time. We can't change it now. Well, I mean, not now, but I mean, put it on the warrant to, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of something creative to help, you know, create a buffer or, or less impactful. Let's, but let's go through the budget process and we'll get through where uh, we have some capital improvement funding that we have to support. Uh, right. And we'll talk more about it, but that's a minor 120000 out of our un unassigned fund balance for a capital right, project. There's no question to me it needs it's to be there. done. So. Yeah. But uh, we, need to, we need to go through the budget uh, process first. So. And, and we're supposed to be getting more information in the next couple of weeks about what we have left in contingencies and things like that so we'll have a better grasp of, of where we are with things. Um, and uh, we still have... A uh, bit of contingency in both the construction and the architectural side of it. So I can't really see the, on the architectural side the more money that needs to be taken up over that. So I hope not. Is, um, <coughs> so, um, yeah. but I, I, I wanted to bring that up and let people be aware of it. I wanted the public to be aware of it. Yeah. You know, is uh, this is something that, like, as I said, this is something that we've talked about from the beginning, and uh, you know we knew that it was going to be an option that we wanted but is now we just need to make that decision so is, uh, well. 
Okay. You can we can adjourn and then go just to the right. budget. So we have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? All right, we're going to go into an informal budget hearing workshop. Does anybody need to use the restroom or anything? What, what Lively. <laughs>
Those are professional certifications, and you have to maintain certain continuing education well, These credit. are just memberships just into memberships. those programs, okay. and they have trainings and a lot of resources. Okay. Yeah. MMA has training online, mm -hmm. but a lot of them can do it no cost, which is really good. That's fine. General assistance, there's no change there. We don't spend very much money on that. Thank goodness the economy's good. Um, the only change actually is we created a new line item of water sewer. Water sewer, yeah. But we just split that with electricity, so the money stays the same. <coughs> Was that a requirement or? No, we had one water. We had one claim. No, we helped, was so we decided to add that. There. Electricity too? No, that's always been in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it has always been in there? Mm -hmm. We don't get a lot, and Lynn's pretty tough on them. If they, you have to show the, what they earn and what their income is, and they don't qualify, they don't qualify. So. It's all mandated, so. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions of that? No. No, straightforward. No, you look like you have a question. Yeah, I do. Just one. So we budgeted 10000 for 2019 and 2020 and 2020. Uh, one, is it the same ten thousand dollars in that account because we didn't really use much of it, or are we? Every year it goes back into surplus. Okay. So we, we have to allocate it again. All right. So it's, it's not just rolling over continuously. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think we would ever use ten thousand. No, of course. That's but <laughs> there no, it ones. doesn't take much if the economy goes south. Yeah. Right. So there were there were times when. Yeah, there were times when the lines had the general system. Yeah. And I yeah. cut it by 50%, I think, three years ago. Three years ago, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so. And that's worked out yeah. so yeah. far. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, looks good. Yep. Thank you. That's it. Good. Thank Any you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you. Let's go to fire. <clears throat> Number seven. Seven. Again, uh, this was part of our contract negotiations we're still working on. Um, so there's been um, increases in wages, uh, the part-time wages. He's asked for a little bit more this year. Want to explain why? Sure. Uh, the increase in part-time wages was mainly due to uh, increasing the hourly rate for the per diem staff that we hire. Uh, <laughs> A year and a half ago, we set uh, a rate of $15 an hour, which back then we thought was pretty good. Uh, since then, with the economy the way it is and everything, we found out that it's not as good as we thought it was. And we're also trying to bring on some paramedic uh, level medical staff, which we felt going to $18 an hour would draw some of them on. So I've recommended the $18 per hour for a per diem, uh, which will help, hopefully, uh, the town to draw in some uh, per diem paramedics. Have you seen an increase in interest at all uh, for part-timers or per diems? Uh, we started uh, probably with 10 applications, ended up with five. We're down to three. I'm not getting a lot more interest at this mm -hmm. point. I think uh, what I see other communities doing, uh, especially around the colleges, Wyndham and, and Gorham and places like that, is they've raised their right. their any. So yep. you know, we felt that we should at least try that as a town first before we find ourselves in a different position. Actually, eighteen dollars to me sounds low. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, again, I mean, if you look What's at what's non-union. Well, it's, it's if you look at the overall uh, pay that's being paid out right. there, we thought fifteen dollars a year ago was now, okay. Because right. well, increase in the minimum wages and everything, everything bumped but, up. So you know, we're we're trying to also draw the paramedic level uh, staff here as a per diem as well. So that's where the increase was in the part time wages. All right. <laughs> University of Su Southern Maine has a program that. Has firefighting training, and they seem to 
go to Wyndham, Gorham. They have they <coughs> offer up housing and things like that. We're going to offer housing over here, right? Um, they're going to be able to stay in there, right? <coughs> Bedrooms. Yep. First they, of all, they they do offer and they have for years the training uh, and a place to live while you also work a shift or a per diem. That's not working out as well as it was five and ten years ago. Things mm -hmm. are changing on that that aspect too. Uh, they're looking more, uh, the students are looking at it more as a job now than I'm going to do this while and, and get a right. place to sleep. So there's a lot of changes going in that that aspect as well. But that's an, I mean, that's something that the town can look at. There's going to be room to do that. The question is, do you have students in the area that want to travel from school back down to here? So it's, it's an option. Is your uh, community college... York County offered that programs like that? Not at this point that no. I'm aware of, no. Yeah. That doesn't mean they won't, but <coughs> it's it's all evolving every year. What about over to like the um, Great Bay College over at Portsmouth? Uh, those colleges over there, they don't offer any of that? Portsmouth, Norton, uh, Dover, Durham? I don't, I don't know I don't that for so. sure. I, think so. no. I don't think they do. <coughs> when we looked into it, it was the, basically the distance Berwick being down the southern end of the state. You know, they just didn't have the, the students that uh, were willing to travel. I guess I, I, I'm not sure. Interns, no, no interns. Everybody's competing for staff and everything. Otherwise, the increases here come under the health insurance and um, retirement funding. <coughs> Well, those are all uh, driving forces to the increases. What about we have enough covered for the new police station and, and fire station in here? You, you know, heat, electricity, is that figured in this yes. budget? Yes, can we, throw, can we put some money in for the heater for the floor? <laughs> uh, I guess that's, huh? up to the, <laughs> that's up to the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could, though, right? If we wanted to, some of it in equipment. But it wouldn't go into effect until after June, right? Yeah, July 1st would be when the money's available. They'll still be building it. Yeah. Well, be close to being done, hopefully. I don't know. August, September is what we're shooting for. Might be like October. Other, other areas that we're looking at for capital is, are things that we normally put in the uh, CIP budget. Is, 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 uh, it's got money in for radios. The SCBA bottles, which is something we fund every year. Uh, personal protection gear is another one we do every year. Um, this year, he's asking for his uh, uh, CPR machine, uh, which we need to replace, I guess. So, mm -hmm. so that's a little bit more expensive. So that's, those are some of the capital things that we're looking at. And also, we've been funding uh, the uh, truck replacement fund at $50,000 a year. Uh, I'd like to fund that this year at 100000 just because we have a truck down in New Haven that's being worked on, and we used up a good, good amount of that money uh, to have that done. So a new truck or an old, old truck? No, it's, a, it's the um, aerial ladder truck. We're getting that. 1997. Uh, there was some safety issues with it as far as the extension of the ladder and being capable of telling you when it was overloaded and alarming, uh, which is a safety issue. Uh, it went down to Connecticut, went back to the manufacturer. They're the ones that, that uh, we felt needed to repair it. While it was down there, they determined that the two of the uh, ramps that were raised the ladder up and down uh, were in need of being rebuilt because they weren't holding the ladder up. So, so they were just leaking? Been, just been one thing right after another. And while it was down there, because it is a 97, uh, I asked them to do a complete evaluation of it. Um, when I had it tested by a third party here just several months ago, uh, they made a note that the underneath was totally rusted, and it's just a matter of time before you start having some other issues. So they're going to evaluate the whole vehicle and hopefully provide us with information as to should we be looking at refurbing it? Should we be looking at getting rid of it five years down the road, two years down the road, but making some recommendations to the town as to what we should, we should be doing with it. And they do refurbish it down there? Yeah. 
<clears throat> this is a company that actually built them. Yeah, they 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 sell meals. That's what this is. Like I said, it was a '97, um, and it's, it's done well. hasn't had major problems with it at all. Uh, it's starting to have problems, and with this unit, you have big problems and cost-wise as well. So. What's uh, this new expenditure, XX medical expenditure, expenditures? We, as you know, I think uh, we do run uh, EMS service for the town of Baroque, and we have since we've had paid staff. And one of the things that I found that uh, I've been running into, I haven't had enough money in my budget. When I go out and use, a, say, an oxygen mask, the town pays for that. Well, I got to reimburse that because I have no way of collecting the cost of that from the patient oh. at this point in time because we don't run an ambulance so I've got to come up with some way to recover it to recover that especially for my budget wise right <clears throat> how much is that dispatch service here between this and the police so is it double for the police to if we had the police department no, we fire pays 12 <laughs> my understanding is we pay 12 percent and PD picks up the rest yeah so at forty thousand is twelve percent of the. Yeah. Wow. Is that more more than usual? The it's more than what Berwick was charging. South, South Berwick was charging us. Yeah. 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 But it's uh, South Berwick closed up, and it's worked out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We 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 have some concerns that yeah. that we'll be addressing. Yeah. Sanford, yeah. like all the dispatch centers, are having. We were meeting at BA, and they they um. They weren't impressed by the response time. I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't. At BA, Burke Academy, I was at a meeting, we were talking about it. And um, they weren't impressed with the response time when they tried it. They did it. Had it for some reason, they tried the response time. I had to use it, and it was 20 minutes or something. It wasn't good. Oh, I, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah. We, we had a, I'm not getting into a lot of detail, but last weekend we had a busy weekend. And it was probably the really first time that we have seen some of the issues. And we've got, we, we have some issues. And There's issues too much radio traffic? Uh, we, we need to, uh, yeah. Yeah, so not enough channels or something? Uh, oh, we had that something. problem. Yes. We took care of that. Yeah. Well, okay. we, yes, we have to some extent. But if we lose our repeater, and you know this, yeah. or if PD loses their repeater or highway loses their repeater, we can't talk to dispatch at all. Mm. That's not good. No. What do you Especially mean? when you got one repeater down in town, you can't use it at all. Does it, explain it to me. If you have fire has a repeater, the police, police department does. uses a repeater, and so does highway. Yeah. If either any of those go down, that department that's on that repeater can't talk to Sanford. The other two departments can, but the other, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got to go to another department, use right. it. A relay. Yeah, that's but right now, the way it is, Berwick and South Berwick operate fire on one channel, and they operate both ambulance services on the same channel. And when we have an incident going on that involves both communities, you might as well forget talking on the radio. Mm -hmm. the, the communications, it isn't there. So we're looking at what can we do to try to improve that, which, as we all know, when you do that, it, it's going to you know, increase the cost of the cost overall money, project. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there are some operational issues as well. Have they has Sanford been okay addressing them? Uh, initially, yeah. I, I think uh, that there's some there's some issues that we need to sit down and talk about. And I don't want to say too much at this point because I really haven't talked to Sanford and give them a heads up at this point. So. Sure. Yeah. And I don't um, want Steve getting a phone call. <laughs> Steve, there's three items here that you increased the department request for. The FICA, the Medicare, and health insurance. The, any particular reason? I don't know. Just like the FICA like and Medicare um, are based on, uh, it's a percentage of full-time wages, part-time wages, longevity, ICMA and overtime so I just corrected the percentage the amounts for the percentages something probably got left out of the department request okay and the health insurance one 
the health insurance um, it's based on it's based on the individual um, so so depending on if it's a single uh, um, subscription family. or family or or um, employee child I did a spreadsheet with with everybody's specific um, subscription and this is the amount that will be it'll come up to I don't know Dennis you probably hadn't calculated in the seven percent yet the per in percentage increase I haven't done anything other than what you've provided no he didn't <laughs> okay so he okay yeah he didn't he just brought it over from the previous year's budget yep okay just so just to keep you in the Teamsters have their own separate insurance, and mm -hmm. uh, non-union people go through Maine Municipal Association. Mm -hmm. So, if they take it, is uh, Chief is um, is uh, going back to the ladder truck, and this is just something that you know James and I had talked about a little bit about um, the uh, uh, land use ordinances and the uh, height. Requirements uh, uh, maximum height was I think it's 45 feet is now was that originally set due to the reach of the ladder truck? Uh, that was set way back uh, and I believe we did we had a hundred foot old ladder truck back then and I think that they did put that into the Comprehensive yeah. plan. I think it was yeah I, I No higher was, than four four, four stories, four stories. Yeah. Right. Um, Is you know, what size what's the ladder truck we have now? It's 75 feet. 75 feet. Yeah. You know, obviously you can't go straight up, but is what would be you know the the tallest building that you'd be you know comfortable you know operating with that? Well, it, it's hard to say because it depends upon how close you can get right, to the building the to be angles. able to get your full reach. Yeah. Yeah. If if I was going to recommend a new unit, I would go with at least a minimum of a hundred foot. Uh -huh. um, 75 foot is great for for single story two story homes when you got a chimney fire in the middle of the winter time and you would normally have to take ground ladders to set up there's a lot of safety it takes manpower but for your for the construction that has the potential of occurring across the street uh, 100 foot would be the way to go yeah. does, the, does South Berwick have one or Summersworth yes so we could use that as a pinch right if it, well, the, it's like anything else, mutual aid. Yeah, and mutual aid. Once so you start relying on mutual aid, it's not always there when you need it. Mm -hmm. So how to answer your question. How yeah. often do you use a ladder truck? Uh, we use our ladder truck pretty frequently, and we, I say that because it's not only a ladder truck. It pumps, it's Multiple. a pumper, and it carries water, which the terminology for that type of vehicle, they call it a quint, does three different tasks. That's why we bought it back in 97, because we got rid of a pumper and a tanker, an old tanker, I think, yeah, for tanker. one vehicle. Yeah. And if we had all hydrant districts in the town of Berwick, sure. you would probably see that type of unit all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't. We have a lot of rural areas, so we have a tank truck. Um, but it, was, it, it served the town well, and I would not uh, recommend even thinking about doing away with an aerial. What, um, what's the cost for a new one? Uh, he asked me that a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I probably don't want to know. <laughs> Our new engines that, that you purchased a couple of years ago, uh, just for the engine, was around half a million dollars. Right. So I'm going to say the lad is probably going to be close to eight, nine million dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, a million bucks. Yeah. I mean, that you can buy, it's like buying a car. You can buy a Ford. Whoops. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it. You can buy a Cadillac, uh, Volkswagen, whatever you want or the town wants. And, and how long do you want it to last? I mean, it's, you can buy a million dollar tower like Dover has. It doesn't have a ladder. It just comes up and there's a tower and four people stand on it and they fight the fire and do whatever they're going to do. Like a bucket that. truck, huh? That's What's right. that? Looks like a bucket truck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's good. I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah. How but, tall does that go? Uh, I think that's a hundred and... Five might even be 110. I think they make them now 125 foot. If they got some five-story and six-story buildings going in. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, e even with ladder trucks, I mean, they they only go so big, and they build skyscrapers. So, you know, 
it saves a lot of manpower and it saves a lot of time, especially if you need it now. Mm -hmm. Is, um, is um, you know, ambulance service, you know, that's something that we've talked about for several years now, is the new station is going to have the room and the facilities available. Um, any idea about if and when you're going to be looking at expanding into that we, area? We as a department have, and, and Joe, uh, right. that I lost here a while ago, uh, was actually working on a plan, right. and we're still doing that now. It's just not moving as fast as, 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 right. as we'd like. But it's a proposal to the town. Um, we had put one together, but we had to make quite a few changes. But to answer your question, it's coming. It depends upon the board and what the townspeople want for a level of service. Uh, right now, we're contracted through Stewart's Ambulance, uh, which used to be American Ambulance. And I don't believe they charge us to provide no. an ambulance. Right. Right. One of the things, uh, concerns we have is that we never know what level of service that they're going to be providing, whether we're going to get a basic EMT, an advanced EMT, or a paramedic. So, but we've dealt with it, and we will continue to deal with it. There is a cost uh, to any of this. And I think a ballpark figure in order to man an ambulance, uh, to buy the ambulance, and maybe even a second one as a yeah, backup, say two. you're probably talking just to get off and running, uh, probably close to a million dollars, yeah. maybe half a million to start. I thought Stuart was going to put an ambulance in the, in the bay for a while. Uh, Stewart's is always not st American. Stewart, but American yeah. has always provided a, an ambulance to the town during. I storms. thought they were going to station one of the new fire stations. Uh, I don't know about that. I I they, they, there, was, there was some talk about it. Nothing ever, no <laughs> finalized. Who does so? Is that your hospital pay for the South Berwick's? Yes. Well, no, they're separate. They're, they're an association. They call them York. I wonder why we don't try something like that or see what. You know what I mean? It doesn't cost the townspeople any money, does it? Uh, they pay, they pay the, 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 yeah, they pay a fee. So your customer though, sponsors fee. the majority of it, though. No, I don't know if they do. I think they're separate. I don't know that for sure. I'll find out. Yeah. Curious about it. Right now, the service doesn't but cost us it, any money. It's a service right. that, that some of my guys feel we should be doing now. And I don't disagree. It's just the cost involved. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we, we've, we also know, uh, we've talked to other departments and stuff, and, uh, you know, and they, they talking about it being a money maker it for is. the town. It well, is. right now it is, and not for the town right now. Right, no, but for it the... It could be. Right, because uh, of the insurances come into the town. It's a matter of handling the billing right. and all of that. You've got to have somebody who really right. can and chase the money. Yep. Free, Freeport that did that? Didn't uh, I don't know if it's Freeport. It was a town, uh, was it Oxford? Oxford? It was one of the towns up north that did that did it and, and found that it was a revenue generator for the town. Yeah, but you no. Know, you have the casino there. That's probably why. No, no, no it? It's, it, it does. If you look at the statistics, <laughs> it, it, it can be. At least it mm -hmm. could be. Sure. Right. Things are changing, like I said. Right. Every year things are changing. But no, I think it was, I think it was Freeport. They, they have a service that they contract out with other towns to do the billing. Oh, they oh, yeah. them. Yeah. You know, yeah. So the, our, our town wouldn't have to do it. You know, it would all go through them. I've checked on with that in that area already in fact Lisa and I had spoken briefly about it because I was trying to see if there was a way right now that we could try and get reimbursed for the medical equipment that we use Stewart's has been very good if I use a mask and they're on scene I can get a mask from them mm -hmm. so we, we right. work they, that way yeah but that doesn't always happen and some of the equipment that we may use they may not have because they don't have that bottom level we're at so but it's it's a it's another area uh, that the town within the next few years really should take a look at yeah uh, and, uh, because it is it does generate money and it would help support yeah. mm -hmm. right, the operation right. have we found a replacement for for bonds have you a replacement yes I hired uh, uh, Joe Stefano uh, he was a 13 a uh, year uh, veteran from Sanford. He's a paramedic. Uh, he's actually running our EMS program right now. Um, so, good guy. It's 
he's what's that? He's a good guy. You like him? Yeah. You better be, right? <laughs> yeah, I like all my people. I mean, I think we, we're fortunate to have the people we do, including my young call guys. I mean, that's, right. they, they, they're there, and that's all I can basically ask for is uh, be there when I need you, and uh, they have been. How about the per diem? Is that working out all right? Yeah, like I indicated, we started, uh, I think we had eight, nine uh, applications initially. We ended up hiring five. Uh, since then, we've lost two because their jobs have changed, uh, schedules have changed. We still have three that are working out well. Uh, I'm just uh, going to be interviewing a couple more here within the next week. Yeah. So I'm trying to stay at least four or five because that kind of gives us that area. And, and most of my on-call people are picking up per diem shifts as well. So well, that's it helps good. them out. It helps yeah, me yeah, out. That's good. Good. Already trained. That's real good. Yeah. Um, Great. It's it it's moving forward. It's come a long way since 2008. Good. All the way around. How many times a year you come before the board? Not anymore. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many times a year? Just once. Just once for budget. Uh, I think we came in. We did a, a, a yeah. department report a couple times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But usually the budget. You do the same thing with the police, the fire, and public works a couple times yeah. a year. Uh, not so much public works. Robert hates getting in front of everybody, but I can <laughs> I can give you the update on what's going on there. But um, usually it's here, and then um, it's been a while since we've had you people come before you. But yeah, it's just good to ask them questions. You know, what I mean, yeah. things we. Yeah. Any other questions of the chief on the budget? No, thank you, chief. No. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the work you're doing. Where will the money come from to, for the repair of the new the fire truck in Connecticut? Uh, we have, we have built up capital reserve. Lisa found some for me. <laughs> oh, so we get we get the money with the yes. building up. Yeah, there. we've been putting fifty thousand you have for into that account CIP. and building it up. I thought we used that. We bought the new fire trucks though. Well, for the first two years you did, uh, but now that's going back to being raised by taxes, and we're, but we're still funding uh, that account that. Uh, reserve for these types of things. See, that's why, and not to take Steve Thunder, but I've always said that capital improvements is something that we need to do, whether it be fire, police, highway, and I know you all know that, but a lot of times because of budget, the taxes and stuff, we cut that out of the budget so it never gets put in for the following year. And when the time comes and you have a breakdown, like this, this breakdown right now, as it stands today, is probably going to be around around thirty thousand dollars to fix this truck. If I didn't have that capital improvements, <laughs> somebody would have to come up with thirty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a critical line item. So, yeah, and I agree. I mean, it's just I know it gets it's tough. It's almost sometimes. like you gotta have it. You can't you can't not be without. It. Well, somebody wanted to cut it a while back, and we. We yeah. had a hard time catching back up. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I they cut everything back then. I could give you all kinds of areas that you've cut over the years. Yeah, and, I know. And we're I know. Yeah, he knows where they all are. I was are. there. Yeah. <laughs> he knows where they all are. Yeah. So I think so we're in a better place. hard to make place. catch up. Thank you. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, let's move on to general expense. It's the first of. You, you want to do planning to get James out of here? Oh, we're going to do planning? Thanks, Dennis. Oh, oh okay. Thank we'll you. do James. I mean, everybody else is getting out of here. I We're thought he was just sitting here all right, we for the fun of it. You know how exciting it all is. Getting valuable life experience, right? That's what you were here for, right? Uh, number four. Number four. <sighs> Planning. A lot of changes in this department this coming year. Um, James uh, is finishing up his uh, master's degree, and I've offered him a full-time position, uh, 37 and a half hours a week, uh, which I, he does more than that, I'm sure. Um, but we're cutting back on uh, our use of Lee J. Feldman, who's we've been contracting uh, since John left. We've had different ones, but Lee J. is the most recent. And that's $90 an hour we pay to have him here. So uh, it makes sense to have James, who's been doing a lot of the work, to be here full time and, and to continue that. And to we pay him $90 an hour to sit here for those planning board meetings? Yeah. 
That's why more and more when the agenda items are. Okay, we're paying any of those that comes here? Yeah. So when they, said. I've been kind of starting that transition period, so when the agenda is light, we go, all right, Lee stays home, and yeah. he's pumped to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's out quite often. If I was getting paid $9, I'd be, I'd be pumped to come in is what I'd be doing, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you. Yeah. What is yeah. Well, he doesn't see the 90. He only yeah. sees he 70. Always, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, so James will be on full-time. Why is it full-time 40 hours? What, what's 37 and a half mean? It's... It was it's established for <laughs> ever ago. Town hall has always, always, been, always been 37 and a half. And you get paid half, for 40? The half hour. No. no, the half hour is unpaid lunch. Mm -hmm. So they get they get the half hour. And yeah. it's, I have yeah, my employees exactly. work eight and a half hours a day, and I give them a half Never hour unpaid it. lunch. That's, that's how I work. work. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the way I always work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so th that's, that's an increase in wages, and we have also... I've, I'd like to bring uh, Jennifer McCabe, our code person, on full time as well. I think you have enough activity going on here um, that she needs to be, especially when this project starts picking up. But she's pretty busy all the time. She's is she just part time right now? Yeah. Yeah. How many hours, Steve? Oh, probably twenty, maybe a little bit more than twenty. Jen? For now, yeah, we're both right around twenty-five. She twenty, twenty-five. You're just still twenty-five. Jen? I'm twenty-eight right now. You'll be 37 and a half mm -hmm. after this? Yeah, 37 and a half. Uh, what, in June or right away? July. July. July 1st. Um, speaking of Lisa, um, not Lisa, but um, what's Jen. the plant? What's the? Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer. Um, uh, when I was with her the other day, uh, out on Route 4, she did a good job. She's a good lady. She's like, very good. Yeah, real good. She, she came in um, and got all her exams passed within less than a year's time. Um, she, Dan spends a good quality time with her, showing her the, the ropes and working with her out in the field. Uh, it worked out well because Dan had to go, and, and she he didn't have his certification, so. It, yeah, well, he, she didn't learn his bedside manner, so we're okay. His yeah. bedside manner wasn't the best, but she she's got a good presence, and the contractors yeah, are really comfortable with her. Yep. And she she's uh, very thorough. She's yeah. very thorough. She makes she Brad jump through the hoops. Too. Over the huh? Common sense. Yeah, a lot of common sense. Need more sense. common sense than we, what we have. So she's the, and she's a local woman. And she's yeah, local. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's from town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. So um, she's a borough girl. So uh, they make a good team in the office, and we have this extra girl, Michelle, who's in there with assessing, and they all seem to gel well. So it's a fine operation. And she likes her car. What's that? <laughs> she likes her car. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hundred thousand miles though. <laughs> to tell the public, it looks good, but yeah, it does look good, but it, uh, but it, it gives her a little bit more professionalism as well. Yeah, what the hell? Do you, shows that up last, that should last forever for a yeah. long time. Oh yeah, sure. So that's where you're seeing most of the increases is in wage increases here. Um, and all the associated health insurance right, yeah. is uh, there. James hasn't had health insurance for quite a few years, so he's now excited about that. Have it? Well, all right, it's been. Through my school, add it to my student. Never mind. We'll go there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much what we're seeing for planning. I'm looking forward to them all being here full time, and uh, a lot of it. What you heard tonight from the recreation master plan, uh, where James and I are sitting down with them tomorrow, and Lisa, they feel that we should be able to hire a grant writer, and we have a grant writer right here and he, he can write grants. They just need to tell him what they want the grants for and we can go looking. Yeah, I mean, we already, I think we've gotten, I've already written $58,000 that the town's gone for grants and then another 90,000's coming and then the CACS grants a half a million. Yeah. So. You got that? Yep. Uh, we, we got 90,000 to do the, the rest of this design. The done. Yeah. To fix this. Uh, the, it's all Mill Hill. But then a half a million's, by, Basically, for grants, all we need is people to come approach me, and I, I'd be happy to write them. You just got to have – this is a conversation that I've had with one of the people here tonight that if you know what you want and, and uh, if you have a project or something that you need and we can look for grant money, tell me what it is, and, and we'll find – hopefully find where the grant is that will help pay for it. But I can't just go looking for grants if I don't have something – to look for. To work on. So, and, um, 
let the people just take out the coupons and buy whatever there's a coupon for as opposed to getting what they want and yeah. going the other way around. Well, it's got to be planned. And, and since James has been here and since I think I've been here, we're kind of pushing you've got to plan. And, and this Envision Borough Group has done that extremely well. And we're in a position now, I think, with grant applications, we're going to be, we can be successful because we've done our homework. That yeah, good. We've laid the groundwork. And, and, and it seems like, you know, people that give grants out like to follow grant money. Yeah. You know, the more, the more grants you get, the more grants Success you, you will have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the, like the whole thing with the cleanup here, you know, mm -hmm. is by we, we're starting that, now that's, you know, yep. rolled over into this. Especially when you can show that you can leverage grant funding to more private funding. Right. 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 Like Alfond has a bunch of private funding out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for recreation facilities. Yeah. <sighs> He doesn't do too much in southern Maine that I know of, but oh, he, I don't he time to change ask. that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, we'll see. But that that's I the planning that budget. That. Assessing budget, you uh, saw a little bit of an increase, but it dropped down. A lot of it we had contracted last year for uh, the, the Envision stuff. The and valuation. Yeah, valuation increases. We still have one. This, next, this year we're coming into is the last year we to pay for the valuation. Uh, so that will, that will come out of the 21-22 uh, budget. But um, otherwise, there's uh, nothing real major so in that. the Vision Internet Service, what is that? Is that yeah, that's the software they use uh, for your tax cards online. Okay. It's so basically it's a, a mega database huge. for assessing. Yeah. It's one of the best. So we're, we're you can see it online. If you go online. Yeah. You can go into the assessing area and it says vision appraisal. Yeah, I, I, I've been there. Okay. To check out my card. Have we already taken care of the street lights? Are we, we going to go ahead and do that? Is that something? Oh, that's all set. They're in the, the street lights are in the, in the public works garage. I'm just waiting for them to start. Putting them in? Putting them in. Okay. So it should be, I think, they might be starting next week. Yeah. Oh, they don't just change the bulbs? The, no, they're the taking whole, the whole head off. Head. The whole thing's just got to go? Right, yeah. yeah. So that's all set and... Uh, and we're just chasing Roland to do the buildings. Um, the money is there, and they're putting together everything for that. And we're hoping. The only reason I ask is I don't know what I was looking at. Well, it was one of the pay items. Right. And they had electricity bills on it for the right, street yeah. lights. That's caught my. That's why I was thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do every time I look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like. <sighs> okay. Any questions of James? And any other things? There's nothing capital or. Uh -huh. Supreme. Yep. Thank you, James. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Do you want to go through? Um, Miscellaneous. It's just the economic development vision for work. We just want to. So now that you got your full time, you're going to build a house over on the, the land you're talking about over there. I would. I would like to. On two thirty seconds. Yep. I. That opens the right. That opens the door for me to do that. Beautiful. We'll see. That's good. We'll see what banks will give me. With that. Oh, you'll be solid. Interest rates are low, so. We have to get the tags from them. It's, a, it's the last yeah, one. Right. It's yeah. the last page. All the way in the back. The first time I got offered an auto loan, it was about it was like 12 or 13 percent. I was like, I can't not. Who are you kidding with this? Oh, and I, 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 I miscellaneous got, with my personality got them down to two and a half percent. Economic so. development. Yeah, I can just cover that. So. Yeah, James will talk about the economic development. So that's fund. that's um, AKA Envision Berwick. Envision Berwick has been relatively uh, dormant. Uh, we kind of go went from Envision Berwick to Rec Master Plan and uh, focus on the summer concert series. So the summer and the comprehensive plan and the comp uh, yeah <laughs> yes the comprehensive <laughs> that took plan a big uh, chunk of us one hundred percent. So the only fun request uh, the summer concert series is a, is a subcommittee of Envision Berwick, and um, a lot of that all that the funds that we sp we spend out. Um, our goal is to make that money back in sponsorships um, to grow it for next year. Um, so that's what we did last year. We spent about uh, $3,500 in cash, and we made that back in, in, in cash sponsorships and, and merchandise. And then the only other piece is um, the, the chamber sponsorship. So that's why I went back from uh, down from 15000 to, I think it's 3200 All right. Any questions? No. You can stay on that while yeah, you're here. Yeah, might as well go. Might as it. well. 
Okay. All right, folks. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Page what do you want us to be? Stay in what, what miscellaneous. miscellaneous. You were just there. Yeah. All, the um, way, all the way back. All the way. Wow. Transfer and miscellaneous. Number 15. Storm water, that's an expense we will incur this year, 42000 That should uh, get us through the development and design phase. And then 2021-22 will be the pony up time for uh, trying to get funding to support it. Emergency management, I put a, uh, a thousand in for that. Um, so, and unfunded liabilities, we're still funding that, 15,000. But um, with our contracts that we did this year, we're slowly whittling that down to where it's more manageable. Sure. So uh, the police, for instance, when they go to cash out, they won't get 60%. Right. They're going to get 30%. Yeah, that, that hammered us pretty bad. So, yeah. Next time we do a contract, it will be zero. <laughs> well, we're getting rid of the longevity, though, aren't we? What? That longevity is going to disappear. Yeah. 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 So that, that's all there is in miscellaneous. Um, we can go to general expense. We'll start there. Um, is Pretty straightforward. It's our health, our workman's comp. We unemployment, huh? unemployment, workers' comp, yeah. unemployment, number insurance. one, the first. The audit doesn't change. That's this is a lot. Next year will be our uh, last year with R H R. Yeah. And we're going to put it back out to bid, uh, which is what we should do anyway. Every few years, uh, they've been good, but. Um, the uh, traffic st streets, we, we kept everything pretty much the same because we don't really know what we're going to, when the savings will come. But so hopefully next year I can tell you that we saved a lot of money. On, the traffic on signal is mostly repairs. What's that? The traffic signal is mostly repairs. We need to replace that. Yeah, well, traffic signals are <laughs> garbage. Uh, they're expensive too. <laughs> they're very expensive. Yeah. Um, and we hopefully, when we do the Sawmill Hill project, I'll get a couple more years out of these street lights, but they're terrible. And they're the people that do the repairs are, uh, don't give it away either. They're very expensive. Mm -hmm. and What's wrong with them? I mean, they're old. Yeah, they're, 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 they're dated. They're, they're very old. Uh, they don't really have any software with them, no. so to speak. Mm -hmm. Is when last time they came down, they said they. When they opened the control box, they couldn't even get it to work through the control box. You know, so yeah, it's I, I thought we got a lot of that change when we did the work on the intersection. I wish wish I'd known that back yeah. then. The bridge. Yeah. We should have. We should have changed. We should have done something there with yeah. the state right where we wanted them. Yeah. yeah. Never thought of it. But that's you know that can that's coming, hopefully soon. Maybe there's some grant money for that. Yeah, this is just going to say had, James on that grant right there. <laughs> In, in it, uh, recently, I got a call from Summersworth. They showed me pictures of somebody caught in the tracks because the light turned red or green or something it wasn't supposed to. It's yeah. If somebody's caught on the tracks, it's because they're being foolish. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, I kind of it, left it, it that, that. Doesn't, That's not the light's fault. That's somebody being I mean, stupid. Summersworth should help us finance it because it affects them too. Yeah, it, affects, it, it affects them all. Right, it exactly. You know, so I mean, uh, as I, I've said, it's got to be a group effort. As I said before, I don't think Berwick has a traffic problem. No, Summersworth. Summersworth has a traffic problem. Right. Okay. So at four thirty on an afternoon. Is Steve, have we had injuries that have led to the workman's comp increase? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. The fire there. I didn't know if there was any others than that. No, not that. Oh, we haven't had any other <coughs> complaints. All right. One of the one of the road crew had last year, weren't they? Seems to see. No, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. The same thing. Yeah. Do we do payroll in house? Yes, we do. Because we we don't, but we we take out our workman's comp every week. So every week we send workers' comp money goes in. Well, it goes in every month, but we take it out every week. We do quarterly payments, but yeah, we used to. Um, I like the I like the weekly things. It's more. It's, it's easy to me to bite on to. It's, it's unfortunate because last year our workers' well, comp dropped. Yeah, uh, that's because yeah. yeah. we didn't have any injuries, yeah. and unfortunately, uh, it's it's it, my my lapse. I, I that's have, okay. Yeah. You know, it's, um, but any questions on that? This is straightforward no. stuff. No. Okay, let's move on to administration. I 
again, uh, did some wage increases. Uh, I made some adjustments here beyond, beyond the 3%. Um, uh, kind of an agree one of them was something I agreed to when I hired uh, Lisa, well worth the extra money. Um, otherwise, we're, we are looking for a part-time administrative assistant to float between my office and finance to do a lot more filing and organizing um, and wherever else we can use her, possibly downstairs, uh, not in Patty's area, but James's area to help do stuff. But uh, it's only going to be 20 hours a week. So, um, and then we gave the selectmen a big fat raise this year, <laughs> zero. Um, what is it? Same as it was. Same as it we, should see a, we should see a positive sign at the end of that. Again, health insurance went up, retirement, all of that goes follows it. Otherwise, health insurance actually went down. Yeah, yeah. 17 percent. Um, health insurance, health insurance went insurance down for the for our department because Jack had a family and I take oh, a single. Oh, you, you're taking single. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. and, and just so you know, with the audit manager's report, the management letter has to do with that individual not reconciling some of the accounts. Printing's down to 20%. Mm -hmm. What is that? Printing. I think we based that on history. Oh, let me see. Looks fine. Yeah, been been under the last yeah. you know, couple of years, so looks like you just... Uh, you cut it back a thousand. Printing. Oh, printing. Yeah, it's been, that's for the been annual under budget, reports. Under budget for the last couple of years, so. Yeah, she's so. been able to get good prices on those town reports. Plus, we haven't made as many, so we don't have a lot of copies sitting around. They don't get up all in the garbage online, at the, so. Yeah. Any questions on town administration? None. Okay. Let's go on to uh, town hall. What did they send out to select? Do you get eight hundred dollars a year for being a collector? Yep. You get it paid at once? Yep. I didn't think it was that much money. It's not. <laughs> no. It's not. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to tell you about yeah. a, a town I was reading into last week. They Town they, Hall uh, is uh, up uh, by twenty five thousand. Um, most of that is uh, equipment purchases. Furniture, wow. things like that. And we put some stuff in our building. Custodial services went up a little bit. Um, building maintenance <clears throat> went up by ten grand. I just who, who does the building services? The Custod cleaning services. Custodial company comes in. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. they do a nice job. <laughs> the guy from Summersworth. Yeah. He's been doing it for decades. Yeah, they and, they uh, don't really hit us very hard at no. all. He's a very good job. They do. You know, that's something. That's something that we're gonna need to talk about. You know, with uh, the fire station. Mm -hmm. and, you know, well, they, they should take care of that. The firemen. Yeah. yeah. Right. And generally. What's that? Generally, they do. They usually. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. the ones who take care of that. Yeah. Soldiers are the ones that clean the barracks. Mm -hmm. But um, otherwise, that's pretty straightforward as well. We. Um, Never know with the building. We've we've recovered pretty good. The heating system is working well. That's been really nice. Yeah, not having a leak every other day. <laughs> we don't. No, no pipes, man. Pipes, Are yeah. we going to build a closet? Uh, build a closet up in the gym? Yes. For that's that, that's that what here? the extra money's for. Where? Uh, the seventeen thousand is to add a storage area. Um, we okay. Had a, yep. We had a price, and we uh, we're going to come back and. Talk to a local guy here in town, and maybe he'll donate some of his time. And Who's that, Tom? Yeah. And actually, we have another person who could help you. He's got some skills. So uh, we think between the materials and that, we can we can pull it off. Yeah, it doesn't need to be much. It's got to look good. Like it looks good now. Right, yeah. That, we really need to look down the road. I won't talk too much about it, but uh, fixing the bathrooms. Um, yeah, no, it, it, we need to talk about that. Yeah. I, like, I like those third. fixtures, man. I do, too. I really <laughs> like that place. I, think I like it. <laughs> those long stalls? Reminds me of the old days, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I oh. wouldn't change the fixtures. You should, 
You should, should, have been, should have been in there when I was six years old when they had basketball games oh. upstairs. Yeah, were, <laughs> somebody was complaining in the, both the ladies' and men's room how bad it smelled. And oh, the cleaning good. guy hadn't dumped his uh, good-smelling liquids down into it, so it, uh, it, it vastly improved after we spoke Yeah, it smells good now. But we need a, we need a bathroom on the third floor. It's kind of strange. Uh, and the sink. That would Elevator. be helpful. As well as with the elevator going in, we might be able to switch out somebody in the office where Maureen was and have a bathroom on the second floor so when people are using uh, the auditorium, they don't have to run up and down the stairs. Yeah. So uh, on the topic of the elevator, is that going to be in this budget? Oh, yeah. Yep. Capital improvements. That's uh, capital improvements. Um, There's got to be a grant out there somewhere for that. Well, I, I have to PDA. look. Once I have a price, oh, yeah. Mike... Mike Lassell's done really well by us. He's kept us the cost down what he's done, so it's within reason. And he, he came out uh, last week with a, a contractor uh, from Portsmouth. Uh, Kittery, Pinebrook. Pinebrook, just Clint? to give us an idea of where the Who best place. Who came Clint? Yeah. Clint from Pinebrook? Yeah. yeah. They're good guys, yeah. Yeah, they <clears throat> did put in quite a few elevators, Mike yeah. said. Yeah. So he wanted them to take a look at it. Um, and. We're talking probably three hundred thousand plus for it, but we have. I thought it was a hundred grand. Huh? I thought it was a hundred grand. No. No. Mike said if we put it inside the building, it would be around two fifty, but I think putting it on the outside makes more sense. It's just <clears throat> it doesn't disrupt the architecture of the building. Um, it doesn't make a mess when we're trying to get work done, um, and, and it will look better. What they're proposing is uh, on this side um, near the front to go up uh, where the three windows are closest to uh, Sullivan Street yeah where the fire where the fire fire escape is. is yeah that's what they're thinking that so Mike's gonna get a where would you come off it where would you come what about the basement floor where would you come yeah up? you would come in uh, where the copier room is Right in so there. we're going to have to move all of that, which is same thing on the second floor. Be right by the stairwell too. Then There's yeah, right right the just on inside this, the stairwell will still be there. Right. And you're going to put it on the outside of the building. Yeah. So we'll have to make it all out of brick. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. not brick. You don't have to. We've talked about. Mike has said that, and I've seen this in other buildings with older buildings. They like uh, to use a different siding to kind of keep it. Aesthetics uh, yeah. distinct from the old building, which I've seen used in a lot of older buildings. What's so they're gonna, and it won't be as hopefully as expensive as brick. But he's got some nice ideas. Oh yeah, he's a good guy. He is. So um, I would think on the inside it would be less money because you're not. It is less it, money. It is less money on the inside. <clears throat> but it, yes and no. It, I'd, I'd I'd be very afraid to start opening up this old building. Oh, you know, yeah. cutting through floors. Yeah. You know, mitigation. Try, try, well, not even the mitigation. It's just the, the the construction materials is attaching things on the interior That's walls. Have yeah. you been into the new inn in South Berwick? They built. They're redoing. No, the stage in. Yeah, I haven't been there the, yet. Um, no. They put an elevator in there. Yeah. Right in the south. Uh, pretty you, neat. Yeah. I I hate that this this building is not accessible. It does not meet ADA compliance, oh, oh. and um, so you really need to do it. It'll take one it, person. What? It'll take one person. Just one person. Follow the claim, it'll be all over. Yep. Well, in the funding for that, um, we um, we did pretty well last year because we had excess funding come in from revenue sharing and also from um, excise tax because it was greater than what we had budgeted. Um, so we, we had some, uh, quite a jump, not a big jump, but enough to, we, I think we can afford to use our undesignated fund balance, that policy we have, to do the elevator, to do the um, uh, radiant heat floor, and, and, and then some more money uh, for towards the roads. Okay. Oh think, wow, that's good. And that will leave us. I'm I'm looking at seven hundred and twenty thousand roughly, but you have over a million that you could spend if you wanted to. But I'd like to leave. Yeah, no, I'm going to have her check my numbers. <laughs> I was going to say uh, she's looking kind of skeptical over there. <laughs> well, it's just it's a big. <laughs> that's that's yeah. your job is to do that. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, 
But I think that's it wouldn't burden the taxpayers, which is what I'm right. really concerned about. Right. Uh, it's a big nut for them. And if we can if we have that money, that's what it's for. Right. And that's what we should use it for. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. So um uh, that's a debt service. Yep, debt um, service. Here's the next one. Debt service is um, pretty much our, our bonds. We have two. You have the fire truck and the, uh, this building clock tower bond that we're still paying on. And the uh, fire station bond comes up this year, principal and interest. So we're, we're seeing a $236,000 increase in that this year. Um, and we're anticipating county tax to go up. Uh, we put in 5%. I don't think they went up that much last year, but we'll see. I haven't seen anything from them. And it's a crapshoot with the school. We plugged in 7%, not knowing. I think, I think it's going to be higher than that. Yeah, that's what I really do. We actually show? She's I, doing I, that I, supplemental I do. budget. She's gonna, they're giving us some more money in the schools. Well, the reason I say that is because I, I believe the enrollment for um, special needs has gone up. Special needs. Yeah. Has gone that's up what significantly. happened last year. He had the increase in special needs. And they're expecting the same thing. So I talked to Denise Mallet last night. They're going to come before you. I'm trying to get them here in March at last meeting in March. Mm -hmm. They should be somewhat better poised to what they're going to spend. But I'm not sure what they're going to get from the state. Right. It's always a crapshoot. Sure. Um, it's supposed to go up. Well, everything. In the paper the other day because she's coming I, up I like with the governor, budget. but she likes to spend money. You think? Yeah. So I'm a little. Still, still have a big surplus. Yeah, we do. It's nice to have the surplus. Yeah, keep right. going. Well, our revenue we will. sharing next year is going to be at 3% uh, for this year where we're in, and, and it will go up to 35 I think, the following year. So we're getting them. Even right now, I, I think our revenue sharing, if it stays on track, we might exceed what we've budgeted already. But, so that would be good. But those are the uh, – that service is a big uh, expense this year, but we've got something to show for us. Public agencies. Huh. Public agencies. Public agencies. Nothing's changed there, um, except for Christmas decorations. Two thousand thirteen. We need Christmas to, decorations. We need to replace all of the wreaths that we put on the yes, poles out here. Please. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they fell apart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's time. We've been it's around time. for a while. <laughs> it's time. Otherwise, uh, you had several other requests for funding. Uh, just actually just two one from home me and then one from uh, uh, 13 and ca caregivers and one other one I hadn't heard of before <coughs> we don't ever fund those I think the nonprofits are catching on that we don't fund them the only ones we fund are the ones we do and, and uh, nothing changed with this coast bus really? I'm re really excited with the fact that they've re they're redoing their routing and uh, supposed to be making improvements. And I talked to Rad, and he said that the uh, bus service is increasing. People are using it more. Well, I know the shipyarders are. I know they're in yeah. definitely got more people from yeah. from the shipyard utilizing yeah. their yeah. bus yeah, we service. We talked to him. I talked to him briefly about finding a site out on 236. For the cars. Yeah, for yeah. the cars, because eventually. They're going to want to develop that. Yeah. 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 But it would be really quite convenient for them to have something out on 236 because that's the route they take, right? When right. They're going yeah. the Correct. Yeah. Right. Going down to so, South and, they, and I swear, if, if you had a bigger lot, if you doubled the size of that lot, you'd still fill it. Absolutely. You know, and that, well, in, in the town of Kerry did a joint land use uh, discussion not too long ago trying to find solutions to the parking and the commuting yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. So there's certainly an opportunity there um, for anybody who is of uh, entrepreneurial spirit with a, a little land on 236. I'm sure there's, there's uh, an opportunity there. Yeah, somebody mentioned Great Works, uh, the, where the Kaplan property was, that maybe they would... Uh, they, 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 their bylaws would prevent a parking would lot to go in there. Yeah, they, they, they could, they could put in parking spaces, you no, know, for use of that land. But the way their bylaws are written, they couldn't use that, you no, know, yeah. for anything like that. I think Route Four, Two Thirty Six. I mean, there's, there's certainly opportunities there. But yeah, you know, so it, it, it would I, have to. Feel is out. 
Yeah, you'd have to investigate a little further just to see how much it would it would pan out. But I, I think it's it's certainly a potential there. Yeah, but Rad, Rad's aware of it, and so uh, hopefully that we can find something. And, and they they're going to be working with the Smiths over here, you know, for the bus service, you know, figuring out the best place for stops, and and uh, we want to put bus shelters out. Yeah. You know, is because one of the things that we can do is um, with the bus shelters is uh, they actually sell advertising yeah. on the shelters and the town gets a cut of it. Right. Now, it wouldn't be a lot, but, you know, it's uh, better than nothing. Let me just tell you, if you're going to do bus shelters, do we, do transfers? we have to maintain no. them down a piece. We do no. them all and they're a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, but we're going to complain about slip-in, sliding, cigarette spots. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. yeah. Can I, I just, awful. before we go, I just want to... Let's get out of here, Tom. We're all set here. I just want to... Well, <clears throat>